بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وافضل الصلاة وتم التسليم على أشرف الأنبياء سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين The digression was not caused by me by mentioning Ahmed bin Taymiyyah the only reason I cited him was to say that you are continuously citing the Ash'ari'ra, Ash'aris, and I could do the same, and this would lead to digression of the subject. We'll end up debating. We'll pause the time because of the microphone. Then they'll say, so no one says they cut parts out. So, the reason for mentioning uh, Ahmed bin Taymiyyah, chairman, was o only because of that, not to digress from the subject. If you note, in each session, I've been attempting to answer his questions. My questions still have not been answered. Some of those questions have not been answered. Where they have, I acknowledge that those answers have, those questions have been answered. The first one was Muqallid. Again, I'll repeat, if you return back to the original video, we don't, do not do Taqlid in Aqeedah. We only do Taqlid in al masail al Fariya, subsidiary issues. With regard to the hadith which is relevant to the subject which was cited from the book of Sheikh Nasir, the hadith itself is Sahih, but what I was asked is, do you consider Khabrul Ahad, that Khabrul Ahad, do you consider the ijtihad of a scholar wrong or right? I would say, if a scholar authenticates Khabrul Ahad, his ijtihad can be right or wrong. But if he does tasheeh or tadeef of a mutawatir hadith, mass transmitted hadith, there is no ijtihad in a mutawatir hadith. And hadith regarding the Anbiya Prophets alayhimu salatu was salam are hadith mutawatir, mass transmitted. Nazmul mutanathir min al hadith al mutawatir mentions. أحاديث أحياة الأنبياء في قبورهم قال السيوطي الإمام السيوطي states في مرقات السعود تواترت بها الأخبار وقال في إنباء الأذكياء بحياة الأنبياء ما نصه حياة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في قبره هو وسائر الأنبياء معلومة عندنا علما قطعيا that it is decisively known through mass transmission that the, live, the prophets are alive in their graves. You mentioned those uh, hadiths like the hadith from Sahih ibn Hibban, was it? Regarding the believer. That hadith is Khabr al-Ahad. And here, Al-Imam Suyuti states, the lives of the prophets in their graves is Khabr al-Mutawatir. There's a difference. Otherwise, why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an say, لا تحسبن الذين قتلوا في سبيل الله أمواتا? Why would he specify a group, shuhada, if they were like everyone else? They are a special group. I am saying to you, the prophets, alayhi salatu wa salam, also fall into those special groups, which, regarding this, the لا يقاس النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بأحد والأنبياء the Prophet ﷺ, you do not make analogy of common believers and the Prophet ﷺ with common believers because they have khasais, special characteristics and also they have shama'il which is very special characteristics regarding themselves. So this brings us back to the initial point that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the ability to make the Prophet ﷺ benefit his nation today. This is not shirk, even according to you. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done that, you, there is no way you can accuse us of shirk. Because you accepted that if someone believes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala done this, you can say that you brothers, ikhwan, you are mistaken. But there is no way you can call this shirk. This is the major difference. This is where your mistake is, that you have ended up calling this shirk and kufr. Declaring believers, disbelievers, uh, hukm aam, a general judgment. If you wanted to, if you did ijtihad and you said, 
they are not disbelievers because they believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given that ability to the Prophet You said nida, calling upon someone is shirk. Of course, you know that there are clauses to that. Otherwise, everyone asks someone for help. If I ask you for help, if I say give me a pen, you give me a pen to write with, I believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created your actions to give me that. Now, if a Muslim believes the Prophet is still able to benefit his nation today, he says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does this, you can say with ijtihad, he's made a mistake because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasn't done this. But there is no way you can call him a mushrik and a kafir. Why? Simple rule that kufr, shirk, all, shirk always remains shirk. Whether the person is alive or dead, because they have given the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to that person. We do not give the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We say the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is in his grave, alive with hayat barzakhiyah, has passed away from the earth. Ahkam dunyawiyah do not apply. But in al-hayatul barzakhiyah, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam benefits his nation. Now you recited the verse which mentions la yanfa'ukum that those dead who do not benefit you, you do you place the Prophet ﷺ amongst those or not? Please, Ustaz Abdul Rahman, write this question down to answer. When the verse you recite which means La Yanfa'ukum, does the Prophet ﷺ fall under that now? You quoted the ayah which means La Yanfa'ukum wa La Yadurrukum in your speeches pre previously, and you mentioned the La Yanfa'ukum, does the Prophet ﷺ fall under that or not? Please answer this question. Note my questions and answer them also. I will attempt to answer yours. Then the tasheeh of Khabr Ahad. I want you to listen to these points uh, with attention. Tasheeh of Khabr Ahad. If a scholar comes, you said he does ijtihad, he corrects a hadith. Another scholar comes along, but by the way, the Hayatul Anbiya hadith is not Khabr Ahad, it's Mutawatir. Imam Suyuti says this, and other scholars say this. But let's say Khabr Ahad. He authenticates it and another one says it's not authentic. How is a layman, a person, most people who are listening to this debate who do not understand 90% of the jargon, the technical terms, how are they able to determine what is authentic or not? Do they do taqlid in this or not? You must answer this question also. Do they do taqlid to determine the hadith to be authentic or not? Or do they follow a particular renowned scholar? Uh, and accept his authentic authentication. So it's not useless quoting a scholar in uh, saying that he authenticated the hadith. You asked, why don't you do istighatha through every believer? And you recited the uh, uh, hadith, the hadith in Ibn Hibban that uh, regarding the it was in Ibn Hibban. Yes, yes. Okay, uh, that hadith you said the Muslim benefits from another Muslim. Where did we negate this? We didn't say he's like the Prophet ﷺ. He benefits with the will of Allah. You can't call the person, if we go past a grave and there's a grave of a believer and he gives salam, we give salam, he gives salam, we benefit, our belief is what? He benefited us with Qudratullah, not on his own. If someone does believe he benefited himself, that person is a kafir, a mushrik, for believing he benefits independently of Allah. No one believes regarding the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa that he benefits of himself. We believe the way he benefited is, us on earth with his prayers, with his intercession. He benefits us now today, on, uh, 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 the way he benefited when he was alive on earth in the barzakh and in the akhirah, in the shafa'atul kubra, in the major intercession. This is the meaning of istighatha and tawassul. You must demonstrate why this is shirk. In fact, we say it's mustahab. Desirable for a believer to believe in this, that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu benefits his nation. Our da'wah call is to keep the ummah in connection with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu so they do not end up giving fatawa like Muqbil al-Wadi'i, who gave the fatwa in al-Tali'a fi raddi ala shia that the Green Dome, no, this is an example not against them. It's just a citation. There's a person who believed that the Green Dome must be demolished. Why? Because they have lost that connection with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So here, the uh, point you mentioned, mufaddila and mufaddala, because some things are very petty. It was written in English and my eyesight is not that strong. So when I read it, he, we're reading a contract and the brother said, it's mufaddala. I said, okay, ismul maf'ud. 
because it's written in Roman transliteration. That's just a side note because you mentioned that. You mentioned Eid, that the meaning of Eid is takrar, takrar shay. This is the linguistical meaning, yes? But I said the hadith, the meaning could also be shari, that do not make my, my grave like a legal Eid. How do you know it's linguistically meant or shar'an? Is it linguistical or shar'an? Even if we say linguistically, then the meaning would be, do not come to my grave all the time. So are you saying anyone who goes to visit al Madinatul Munawwar, he goes to al Masjidul Nabawi, and every day after the prayer, he thinks, I will go and give salam to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he goes and gives salam after Fajr, after Dhuhr, after Asr, after Maghrib, after Isha. Does he fall under a prohibition? This is haram. If it's haram, you must prove this from Quran and Sunnah and Ijma'. Not st statement of one scholar, Ijma'. Now, you mentioned Al-Hafidh ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, rahimahullah, in Fathul Bari said regarding Imam Fakhruddin al-Razi, um, you said he corrected his belief. Is that what you said, Sheikh? So, Hassana i'tiqadahu. But if you check Fathul Bari, the Nuskha is Hasuna i'tiqaduhu. Without Bab Taf'il, it states his belief, he corrected his belief in the sense, what was he referring to? He was referring to Fakhruddin Razi that he wrote a book on magic. Why did he write a book on magic as, a, uh, as an academic work? Not because he believed in magic. As some people misquoted, they said he wrote a book on magic. There's some people misquoted this. And Al Imam uh, Ibn Hajar states, Hasuna i'tiqadu. His i'tiqad became good. You check that on the marginalia of Fathul Bari. Then you also mention that uh, uh, regarding these Asha'ira, just this is the last point because <laughs> Al Imam Al Bayhaqi was a student of Ibn Furaq and he wrote a book in defense. Furaq, Jazakallah. Okay. Going back. To the original point, um, which was, I wanted from you definition of shirk, uh, regarding shirk, I want a definition, because why, I've made it very clear, istighatha through the Prophet Sallallahu is mustahab desirable, you say it's shirk, now there's contradiction between our claims, you must demonstrate why our belief, the way I have explained it, is shirk billah, we have associated partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're saying you want narrations, we will move on to the narrations once you show that our definition of Tawheed and of the ben Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam benefits this Ummah. Our definition, the way, not the way you misquoted me earlier, which you have apologized for, that you must show how the, this shirk contradicts, uh, the, your definition of shirk contradicts the Hayat, the Hayatul Anbiya and the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam benefiting us. So again, we would say, is shirk muhal shar'an or muhal aqlan? You said it's possible for the messenger, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to create the ability in the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa to help. If that is the case, then you can never fall into uh, shirk by believing this because shirk is muhal aqlan. Shirk is impossible, rationally impossible. So the, uh, Allah, we will say, for instance, if we say, is it possible for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to create another God? It's impossible. Why? Because the divine power does not relate to such things. Like the philosophers ask, is it possible for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to pick up a boulder so big he cannot pick it up himself? How do you respond to this? The Asharis are the ones who give the reply, by the way. They state that it is a rational impossibility for divine power to attach itself to impossibilities. It's impossible. Muhal aqlan. So shirk is muhal aqlan, meaning a god with Allah is muhal aqlan. If it is muhal aqlan, how could it be possible for Allah to create within the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the ability to help? You must either reject one or the other. This question you have avoided. Now going back to the verse, which was, "Walau uh, annahum I I said to you that if you say al ibratu bil qadiyah that the consideration is given to that qadiyah. That qadiyah lasted throughout the life of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That believers could go and ask the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to seek forgiveness for them. It continues into barzakh. How have you said it does not continue into barzakh? You tried using lugha, id. I mentioned, check what uh, Al-Ambari mentions regarding uh, id. There are so many different linguistical points you can mention regarding id. But it's common sense. 
that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, benefited his Ummah throughout his life until he passed away and continues to benefit them in Barzakh and will continue to benefit them in Al Akhirah in the hereafter. This is our belief, nothing more than this, not the false. Uh, concoctions people make that we believe the Prophet ﷺ sits on a chair and place a chair in the masjid or the Prophet ﷺ is uh, seated here. This uh, uh, regarding Ibn Kathir, rahimullah, the Tawheed he learned from Ahmad bin Taymiyyah was, is mentioned in Walau Annahum Ibdalamu Anfusahum. He mentions the Qissa, uh, the man who went to the grave of the Messenger of Allah. وَقَدْ جِئْتُكَ مُسْتَغْفِرًا لِذَنْبِي I came to you. For uh, seeking forgiveness for my sin, he went to the grave of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Is it my turn? Yes. Alhamdulillah. <coughs> <coughs> and Asra Rashid mentioned uh, many points, and I'm going to go all of, try to go all, over all of them. One of the things that, Wallahi, I was amazed when he said it. I was actually amazed, and I held myself back was when he was talking about mutawatir. He said, we take mutawatir if it's tasheeh or tadaif. Do you do tasheeh and tadaif and mutawatir? No. no. Brothers, do you do tasheeh and tadaif and mutawatir? Do you know the definition of mutawatir? Yes or no? Yes. Oh, yes. Let me, brothers, carry on. It's my turn. That shows, go to the smallest books of ilm al-hadith. <coughs> From the smallest books is nukbat al-fikr. By Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, rahimahullah. Al-Athari, al-Salafi. He said in his book, Ibn Hajar al Asqalani's Kitab Nukbat al Fikr, and just read his Nuzhat al Nadar, and also read the Nukat of Shaykh al Bari on it, Rahimahullah, you will find that the Mutawatir is Yastahilu Tawatuhum al al Kadib. It's that they've reached an amount and a number which they cannot lie. So the scholars don't even research. Ibn Hajar Rahimahullah states when a hadith reaches a multitude narration, there's no need to research anymore. It's too much in number. Authenticity is automatically there. So to say authentication and weakening of mutawatir, that is amazing. <coughs> the only hadith which is researched, even if you look at the science of hadith, the only hadith which are observed and they're looked at and they're look, checked are hadith which are what? <laughs> Ahad. Especially when they divide it, بِعْتِبَارِ وُصُولِهِ إِلَيْنَا how he reached us. Um, he said, he brought the statement of Imam Suyuta, rahimahullah, that the hadith, uh, he brought the hadith of anbiya fi quburihim, that the prophets are alive in their graves. Is that our mahalul niqash? Is that what we're discussing? Did I say that hadith of, that the Prophet is, is, is alive in his grave? Is not mutawatir or say, did I say that hadith pertaining to istighatha? Did I not say that the hadith pertaining to istighatha are ahad? Did I not? Isn't that what I said? I said a hadith pertaining to istighatha are ahad. He brought an evidence to show that a hadith pertaining to the prophets being alive in their grave is mutawatir. صارت مشرقة وسرت مغرب فشتان بين مشرق ومغربي. I'm at the east, you're at the west. There's a big distance between the two, and you can't base an evidence on that, my brothers. Wallahi, and this is the issue, brothers. And I'm telling you, in your course of your life, brothers, studying the religion, you're going to know أهل السنة. They don't divert from the موطع النزاع, the point of discussion. لا يميل لا يحيدون عنها. بل أهل السنة are known to what. يذكرون ما لهم وما عليهم. We mention what's for us and what's against us. This is how it is for us. So bringing أحاديث الأنبياء that they are أحياء في قبورهم that is الحيد عن مورد النزاع is diverting from the point of discussion. And wasn't our contract that you're not going to bring the statement of سيوط and the likes of them? Isn't سيوط from the people and scholars like that? It's like me bringing Ibn Taymiyyah as a حجه. Your Ibn Taymiyyah is the person you're questioning in the first place. How can I use him as an evidence? It's like using Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab against you. You don't agree on Muhammad, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab. So I won't use him as an evidence. And that's why we wrote in our contract. We all agree on the thirathat al-qurun al-mufaddila. No, he, that's what he understands it as. Thirathat al-qurun al-mufaddila. We're going to bring them and we're going to make them our hujjah. Didn't we say that? That was our agreement. And that's what we said we're going to say. My brothers, this shows amazement. He said, وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتِ Do not consider the, the, the Mujahideen who died for the sake of Allah. Don't consider them dead. Are the women of the Mujahideen married? After they, after, when they, once they're put in their graves. Are there women married off? Can other, another man marry them? The ijma of the ulama is that the person who is alive, you can't marry his wife. Can you marry a man who's alive, his wife? 
the fact that you can marry their wives, it shows that they're not living the hayatun dunyawi. They're living what? Hayatun barzakhi. Now you may come and think to yourself, what about the Prophet? The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, he has a khasais specification where his wives, no one can marry him after him. Alayhi salatu wasalam, sallallahu alayhi wasalam. Then he said, he keeps bringing the concept of nafa, 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 benefit, benefit. He keeps bringing that up. I said, if we say every nafa, every nafa, that a dead body in the grave right now, if I take a person's bone, he's benefited me. And I use it as a walking stick. Do I say that that dead body benefited me? Did that dead body, body benefit me? Can I say this is nafa? I can do istighatha to him. Allah is gharib. It's gharib. And then what happened is he brought the issue of a nida. He brought the issue of nida, calling. And these were one of the shubuhat that I was waiting for. This is now something I can say, asrar. Alhamdulillah, you brought something to the table. And nida, my brothers, that we're talking about is nida un ma'attalab. We're not just talking about mujarradin nida. Nida can be anything. So when a little child cries, he's like, mommy, even if his mom's not here, he's doing shirk. The little child, when, he's, when you beat him up, he goes, mommy, he cries. Are you going to say, yeah, mushrik? To the little kid. <laughs> yeah. No, you don't. The nida is of types, my brothers. It's of types. When her father died, she said, Ya Abata. She wasn't calling on to her father because it was not fi halati at talab. She didn't want something from him. Alayhi salatu wasalam. So this is my brothers, the nida learn. And just go to Qatrun Nada wa Ballu Sada by Ibn Hisham al Ansari. It's a grammar book, one of the most basic books you will find when you look at the huruf al nida when he's speaking about it. He divides it and he categorizes it there. Alayhi rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, he then says a point which is very important and this is the problem of why the whole discussion is going and I want you guys to understand he said we do not give the Prophet the characteristics of who? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam we don't give the characteristics of the Pro Allah wa ta'ala we don't give it to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said that right? that's what he said neither Kuffar of Quraysh did that Kuffar of Quraysh never gave the characteristics of Allah to the things that they were worshipping never so what's the difference? Kuffar of Quraysh never gave the characteristics of Allah to their things that they were worshipping. They would say, Ma'na'buduhum, we won't worship them. Illa zulfa. We just want the idol to get us closer to Allah. This idol is just a stepping stone. It's Allah we want. We're not giving. Well, Allah is telling you, Allah is saying to you, sa'altahum. If you go to one of the mushriki Quraysh and you say to them, Man khalaqa samawati wal ard, who created the heavens and the earth? Who controls the affairs? Who is the one who brings the dead out of the one that's alive? Just ask them that question. These are Allah's characteristics. They will say only Allah does that. We, no, our idols don't do that. The ones that we're worshipping, they don't do that. So this is still not leaving what Mushriki Quraysh were affirming. They were affirming that. Where we should be different, brothers, is that we then say, because he created us, because he sustains us, and he runs our affairs, because he's our Lord, we should worship him alone. We should not do istighatha to the ones who are dead. We should only go to him. This is mafraq turuq. This is the place where we divert from kuffar of Quraysh. This is where we go away from the mushrikeen. Has this point sinked in properly? Has it been well understood? So saying to me, we don't give the characteristics of Allah to the Prophet. That to me, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, that does not show to me giving the characteristics of Allah to the Prophet, uh, sorry, he said, we don't, sorry, we don't give the characteristics of Allah to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is what? It's not a hujjah for me to say that you are, that, that that's the correct way. Then he goes, the issue of naf'un ghaybi, which I responded to, um, which I did respond to. Then he shared the issue of tasheeh, taqlid and tasheeh. Are you with me? The blind follow is the issue of tasheeh. No, it's not, not necessarily. The issue of uh, tasheeh, I and mean, the issue of ijtihad in hadith, it has i'tibaran, two angles of looking at it. It's a taqlidun from another angle, and it's an ijtihad from another angle. Tasheeh and tad'if. From one angle is ijtihad, and one angle is a taqlid. Here the question that arises is, what are you in this field of hadith, tasheeh al-hadith? Because it's a matter of authenticating and weakening, you've got one of two choices. Are you a mujtahid, that you can do tasheeh yourself, and you do it yourself? Or... Are you a level called mutabi' and you follow the scholars that have done it? 
or are you a muqallid? And this issue of authenticating and weak narrations. Then scholars who've weakened and authenticated narrations, do you just take their statements as it is? وَلِذَلِكَ وَلِذَلِكَ أَبُوْ وَلِيدِ الْبَاجِي He has a book on the issue of Sahih al-Bukhari. Rijal al-Bukhari, he talks about it. And this issue, you fossil fiha, he clarifies it more if you want. Then he went on to the issue of he doesn't benefit us independently, the Prophet. A kuffar of Quraysh was saying the same. Kuffar of Quraysh was saying the same. They were saying that our idols don't benefit us independently. Allah is the one who benefits us. But the way to get to Allah is not directly. Just like when a, a, a king has receptionist and you can't go directly to the king. You have to go through the receptionist in order to get to the king. That's what they said to Allah. And then we hear the issue of tashabbuh. When, you, when we give Allah his characteristics, the way they are befitted to be given to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, they call us mushabbiha. But then this issue, they bring tashbih. Of saying that the khaliq is like the makhluk. And we're just only affirming for Allah the characteristics which he affirmed for himself. I'm not going off topic. I'm, this is my... Yeah? Five more minutes. Good. Why bring Sheikh Mughbilim Lahadil Wadi'i? Alayhi rahmatullahi up. Why bring his name up? This issue, we're not talking about Sheikh Mughbil. We're not talking about Sheikh Al-Albani. We're not talking about these noble ulama. If you want to discuss the noble book of Sheikh Mughbil and how he refuted those concepts, I will make a niqash with you another time if you want. I'm ready. I've read it, summarized it. I rewrote the Fahras page for it, a content page. So if you want to make a discussion, I'm more than happy to do it with you. But this is not our mahalu niqash. Please don't bring no, uh, scholars and other people who are not uh, part of our discussion. You said it's mustahab to call to other than Allah. Or it is mustahab to do this, he said. He said it's mustahab to do... It's, no, he said, let me correct myself, inshallah. He said it's mustahab to do istighath of the Prophet wasallam. The camera was rolling. I wrote it down as soon as he said that. Then I'm saying to you, why are we here in the first place? Bring your evidence for that, brother. If it's mustahab... To call to other than Allah, then the evidence is on your shoulder. Please provide us with a hukm. Istihbab is a hukum shar'i. It falls under ahkam shar'iyya, a taklifiyya. So, sah? It is talabu fi'lin ala wajshin ghayra mulzam. It's asking for you to do something in a, a, not in a forceful manner. Who's asking you to do it? Who is the shari'? Who is the one who tells you to do something? The talab is min Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. So where did Allah say, call on to the Prophet after his death, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and that it's recommended that you're going to get rewarded for it. This is why we're here all day. This is the whole reason we made our way here. This is why thousands of people are going to be watching this. Please, asrar. Hadani Allah wa iyyak. May Allah guide you and myself to the straight path. Please provide us with that hukum istihbab. So when you come up, please say, qala Allah, qala Rasul, qala al Bring us these aqwal, sallallahu um, you asked me how do I know that the word Eid means itakrar That's what you asked me You said to me how do you know that the word Eid here is Lugatan Sorry Lugatan you, you said to me how do you know that the word Eid Let me finish my time inshallah uh, the, How do you know that the word Eid that was used in the hadith Was meant by the linguistic meaning That's what he said because of the hadith itself explained it. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said, if it was not for that issue alone, the hadith Sahih al-Bukhari, the hadith Aisha, she said, if the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was not scared of people coming to his grave, his grave would have been made out in the open, sallallahu alayhi wa His grave would have, not, would have been what? La ubriza qabruhu. His qabr, sallallahu alayhi wa would have been made out in the open. My brothers and sisters, I want you to get to understand this point. This is five days before he dies. He says, May Allah's curse be upon the Christians and the Jews. Why? They took the graves of their prophets as a masjid. Five days before he died. You know five days before you're dying and you're on your deathbed. You'd be talking about those most important things. The prophet is elaborating on the issue of shirk. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us to stay away from that. Don't do that. And Aisha said, if it wasn't for that, his grave would have been out in the open. So the tikrar here is that the grave being out in the open, he was scared people would keep coming to it. That's where the meaning is restricted. And that's what the ulama who explained the hadith, all of them said. Um, he said, visiting the grave always. Does that come from the issue of Eid? Go visit the Prophet's grave. First of all, before you say visiting the grave, always the visiting has a, its permissibility. Like in inshallah ta'ala, if you want to have a discussion about the issue of Shadr Rihal, in which Sheikh Al-Islam Taymi refuted in Bakr, 
Al Bakri and the likes of them, and Sarim al Munki for Radda al Suki. The issue of Shaddi al Rihal, if you're referring to me traveling from London just for the Prophet's grave, we believe that's haram. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You cannot travel from London to go to just see the Prophet's grave. But when you go to Medina and you go to the Prophet's masjid, it's highly recommended that you go and you give the Prophet or it's recommended that you visit his grave whilst you're going out. And the Sahabas used to do that. But to just intend for no other purpose to leave London just so you can go to the Prophet's grave, we believe that Prophet prohibited that himself. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, La rihal illa ila thalatha masajid. Do not travel to any place, a place, other than those three places, which is Masjid Yahada, Bayt Yah. Ten seconds. Wallahi ya, that's ajeeb. The issue of Hassan Atiqadahu, which he brought, Muhammad Zahid al Kothari, who is somebody you highly looked up to, Muhammad Zahid al Kothari agreed that that's what he meant. Wallahu alam. Bismillah rahman rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Waftalus salati wa tamu taslim ala ashraf al anbiya yusayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali wa sahbi ajma'im. The first point was regarding mutawatir and khabrul ahad. When I said that, and you can rewind the tapes, this is what is meant. There is no tasheeh of mutawatir because it has been transmitted with yaqeen and no shak. I was saying there is no ijtihad or tasheeh of mutawatir hadith. This was the point. The, if you call it ijtihad, it's not ijtihad because ijtihad relates to fiqh. Tasheeh. Tasheeh al hadith relates to khabr al ahad, solitary reports which would be gharib, aziz, mashur to individual reports, but will never relate to Khabar Mutawatir. This again, you have done wrong transmission within the Majlis, wrong transmission from me. After this, you said bringing Hayatul Anbiya was unnecessary. It was necessary at that point because you had the wrong conception that I was saying Prophets salam did not die, did not taste death, and therefore are alive. Oh, the conception, the, what you mentioned regarding amwat, that they are dead and they cannot benefit. And I clarified that they are in fact alive in al-hayatul barzakhiyah. They have al-hayatul barzakhiyah. And this is what we mean when we say the prophets السلام, are alive. It does not mean al-hayatul dunyawiyah, worldly life. So this, these are two points which need um, uh, clarification. You mentioned the martyr. لا تحسبن الذين قتلوا في سبيل الله أمواتا. You ready as, as أموات. But I'm not as nitpicky as you. أمواتا. There's a mud at the end. So, in this verse of Al-Quran Al-Kareem, you can rewind the tape. In this verse of Al-Quran Al-Kareem, every human makes mistake. Wallahi, it's not a big issue. In Taraweeh, people make mistake when they're reading Quran. So, in this verse you said, if the martyr dies, his wife obviously becomes... Uh, uh, she sits idda, which we know the ahkam of idda from Quran, four months and ten days. But you said regarding the Anbiya Ali Musalam, they have hukm khas. No one can marry their wives after they pass away. This is true. This is the very point that the way the martyr is alive, he has his special qualities. The prophets Ali Musalam have their special qualities, and at this point. You, mention, you make the, the resemblance of calling upon the Messenger of Allah sallallahu like the mush, mushrikeen, polities. This is one of the major distinctions. This, as a citation, uh, the, this was first forwarded by Ahmed bin Taymiyyah in his book, Qa'ida Jalila fi Tawassal fi Tawassuli wal Wasila. In that book, he forwards the distinction of Tawheed, Rububiyya, Uluhiyya, and that the Mushrikeen, the polytheists, had Rububiyya. But I will say he was mistaken. They did not have Rububiyya. Otherwise, why were they, why was in the Quran, Arbaban min dunillah, the word Arbab is used. Arbaban min dunillah, that they took gods other than Allah, the word Arbab is used. Rabb, why have you fallen into this mistake? And I'll clarify this to you with simple. Uh, sentences, why have you fallen into this mistake? There are two reasons. Number one, Rububiyyah, you have limited it to Tadbirul Kaun. Tadbirul Kaun. That there are limitations to Rububiyyah. I say to you, there are no limitations to Rububiyyah as you, as, as you may do. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for instance, is Shari' the lawgiver. 
if a human being claims to be shari, the lawgiver, like the Jews and the Christian priests did, what, they, what did they say? Like the Catholic Church, they believe the Pope can make halal and haram. They make a mistake in Tawheed Rububiyyah because they make Ghayrullahi Shari the lawgiver. Now, if someone falls into shirk in Tawheed Rububiyyah, automatically he falls into shirk in Tawheed Uluhiyyah. Automatically. The both are lazim malzum. This is my da'wah. Both are lazim malzum. You cannot say the mushrikeen of Mecca did not have uh, uh, Tawheed Uluhiyyah and they had Tawheed Rububiyyah. This otherwise would make the Qur'an laghw. Astaghfirullah, laghw. We do not believe this. The Qur'an addressed the polytheists of Mecca al mukarrama addressing them with Tawheed Rububiyyah and Uluhiyyah, with Tawheed. Why? Because by cancelling out Tawheed uh, uh, Rububiyyah, they cancel out Uluhiyyah and vice versa. They, uh, they're and Tawheed al asma wa Sifat. So you said then that Istighatha and Dua, that they made Dua and you make Istighatha, you made them the same. Firstly, Dua, uh, supplication, is only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Supplication as in Ibadah. The Istighatha done by Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah is seeking assistance from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa in the way they sought it in his lifetime, in his Hayat, Al Hayatul Barzakhiyah. They ask for his tawassul, for his shafa'a, intercession, for his um, istighatha. This, there's no difference be between al hayat dunya, al hayatul dunyawiyah, and al hayatul barzakhiyah. There's no difference between the two. You said al nida ma talab, that one is a proclaiming, saying, calling upon someone with seeking something. Again, you, you're not rationalizing my argument. And nida ma talab, if it is shirk, it should be shirk always. Shirk is always shirk. Calling upon someone for something. If I say, Ya Ustaz Abdul Rahman, give me your attention. And nida ma talab, it is not shirk. When I say, give me your attention, it is a nida ma talab. What makes the distinction between a mushrik and a Muslim? The mushrik believes the one being called upon is creating his own actions, is self-sustaining has wujud from min indi nafsihi existence from himself therefore therefore he has existence from himself and he makes his own actions therefore an nida ma'a talab is not the only clause you should place other clauses onto this otherwise you're going to fall into the mistake you said i gave the answer of nafa ghaybi if you re rewind the tape you did not give the answer of nafa ghaybi you'll fall into that same mistake. First you recited the verse, لا ينفع ولا يضر. They do not benefit and they do not harm. But then you said, نفع غيبي. You made a تخصيص. So I'm saying, like this, you'll have, you know your general statement, like this general <coughs> statement on clause number seven, you didn't place the clause after the Prophet ﷺ has passed away. Technically speaking, I've won the debate because you've, accept, you've accepted that during the lifetime of the Prophet ﷺ, istighatha was permissible with the conditions you mentioned. Shafa'atul Kubra on the Day of Judgment, it's permissible. So technically speaking, I've already won the debate on point number seven. But because I'm not jadali, I'm not here for argumentation, I know that you meant uh, to place that clause on there. So I'm not a jadali person. So moving on, you, enough ghaybi, you need to answer that. Then after this, you made a, a, a similarity between the idols of the Quraysh and the way people do istighatha through the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, at the haddak, I challenge you, when you recite the verses relating to the pagan idols, I challenge you that the judgment of the pagan idols you apply that on the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Otherwise, you would have to make a taqsis. You would have to say uh, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is mus mustathna, an exception to this judgment. Check the verses. If you you have this book. Qaida Jalila fi Tawassul Wasila, he cites all the verses you need. I'm sure you're using this book also. This comparison between the idols and Muslims who seek istighath of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa is what we call a disanalogy. Al qiyasu ma al fariq. The two are not the same. Otherwise, Ibn Kathir rahimullah would not cite the narration if it was shirk 
wadih, if it was very clear shirk like the idol worshipping, or other citations like at tabarani asking the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for uh, food, um, complaining regarding his hunger, which we shall cite later. <coughs> so here you said, do not mention the fatwa at tali'a fi raddi ala shia. What does that fatwa state? That it's necessary upon the Muslims to destroy the green dome of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In al madinatul munawwara it's necessary for them to demolish that dome. This subject is linked to this subject because as Muslims we believe our connection with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is in al-hayatu dunyawiyya, al-hayatu al-barzakhiyya and in al-akhirah how he alayhi salatu wa salam is shafi' meaning intercessor in, in dunya, in barzakh, in akhirah and you said cite the uh, proof for istihbab why is this a desirable action? I cited the verse وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذْ ظَلَمُوا You have not answered that verse. What was the meaning of the verse? When they run themselves, they go to جَاءُوكَ They go to you, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam فَاسْتَغْفُرُ اللَّهَ And they seek forgiveness of Allah وَاسْتَغْفَرَ لَهُمُ الرَّسُولُ The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam seeks forgiveness for them. This hukm, I said to you, why did you limit to the qadiyah? The qadiyah was some munafiqeen, hypocrites did not want to go to the Prophet ﷺ. They said, uh, we will not go to him. Then the judgment came if they had only gone to the Prophet ﷺ. If it was limited to that qadiyah, then was it permissible for companions to go after that? Or does it become shirk? Or when the Prophet ﷺ passed away, why does it automatically become impermissible? Where did you get that impermissibility from? We follow the verse. The verse is mutlaq. So you're saying you haven't presented proof. I presented the verse. You must counter my istidlal from the verse, which you must make the takhsis, or you do taqeed, or you say, is it al-mutlaq al-am, or al-mutlaq al-mutlaq al-muqayyid, or al-mutlaq al-khas, any, uh, uh, not al-mutlaq al-muqayyid, meaning mutlaq am or mutlaq khas. What is the judgment of this verse? Be very specific regarding the passing away of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How does it affect this judgment? Because anyone who goes to the grave of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knows that they are there giving him salam and he returns the salam. So in the same way, why can he not seek forgiveness for his ummah? Why have you said that is shirk? Why isn't salam shirk? So when we give salam to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it should be limited to his lifetime. Now when we go to the grave and we give salam and we receive reward, benefit, that should also be shirk because he has passed away and according to you does not benefit anyone in that way. So naf ghaybi point, also you mentioned la'an Allahu al-Yahuda wa nasara ittakhadu qubura, qubura anbiya'i masajida, rawal Bukhari. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cursed the Jews and the Christians. They took the graves of the prophets as masajid, places of worship. This is not inclusive of shafa'a, intercession, of shafa'atul anbiya. It's not inclusive of that. Because if shafa'atul anbiya, in the way you understand it, is shirk, it would be shirk in dunya, akhirah, in barzakh. Shirk is always shirk. You still have not answered that point also. That why does the judgment change? if the person is in a different place. How do you define shirk then? That's where we go back to the initial question. See, I've answered, responded to all your points. Back to the initial point. Is shirk muhal aqlan? Or is shirk muhal shar'an? If you don't agree with the terms muhal shar'an and muhal aqlan, then tell me how you want to define shirk. Make it very clear how you want to um, uh, do this. And I challenge you also regarding tawheed rububiyya, that you must do, show your istiqra and tatabbu, you, you said it's, it's known through istiqra and tatabbu. Istiqra, question, Shaykh Abdul Rahman. Istiqra is tariqa dhaniya. It's presumption in mantiq. You check books like Isa Ghoji, simple text. Uh, istiqra is uh, akhtari, is sulam al munawraq. Istiqra is tariqa dhaniya. How can you reach yaqeen through istiqra, which is? If you say through the Quran, then you must dem demonstrate that you have done istiqra, meaning go through all the mushaf and show every single ayah refers to uluhiyah regarding the kuffar of Quraysh and it does not refer to rububiyah. You must show, demonstrate to the audience that they were muwahideen. We believe they were mushrikeen. This analogy of the idols and the Prophet ﷺ is this analogy. I will repeat that for the audience. So here, 
you you again agreed with Qudra that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to create within the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ability to help. Why is this belief shirk? You said it's like idol worshipping. The idols, they believe that the idols do this um, through the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Atahaddaq again. The idols, they believe the idols were mush- they had shirk in Rabubiya, which means they had their own isolated kingdoms. Each idol had its isolated kingdom. They believed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the uh, Rabb, and these are also Arbab. Each one has his own little kingdom independently of Allah. This is what they believed, independently of Allah. In every aspect, they did not believe that they are mustamid, meaning taking uh, power from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, people are worshipping them. No, they, what they believed is that they, in each God has a kingdom himself, a short, smaller kingdom than Allah. And then, وَمَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ قَدْرِي um, The reason why you're going to see deficiency and khalal in Asrar Rashid's argument is because the ayah that's always going to stand in front of him, which he can't divert from, is وَلَا يُؤْمِنُ أَكْثَرُهُمْ بِاللَّهِ إِلَّا وَهُمْ مُشْرِكُونَ The majority of them do not believe except they have shirk. The iman here is affirmed for their tawheed al-rububiyyah and the shirk here is their tawheed al-uluhiyyah. Look at Tafsir al Jarir al-Tabari. You have Tafsir al Jarir al-Tabari? Look at it. You have Tafsir al Jarir al-Tabari? Look at it, inshallah ta'ala, you'll find it. The ones who are watching it, go to Tafsir al Jarir al-Tabari and you'll see it. That being said, that being said, this argument of Tawheed al rububi and Uluhiya, Allah, Rabbul al-Ardi wa sama affirmed for, the, for them that they have Tawheed al rububiya and that they have Shirk in Tawheed al uluhiya How dare that somebody comes after and says, no, they don't have Tawheed al rububiya as well. That would be gharib. Again, I, alhamdulillah, I'm, that's gharib, jiddan, gharaba. Lakin, akhi, ashtarar, I'm very happy today, and I'm really amazed, alhamdulillah, we have reached some form of achievement, because I don't feel like I've wasted my time. Because asrar is now, he's started to accept Tawheed al-Rububiya, al-Uluhiya, al-Asma'i wa sifat. It's now soaked in, it's taken it in, and he's now accepted it, that Tawheed al-Rububiya, Tawheed is three types. Al-Rububiya, al-Uluhiya, and al-Asma'i wa sifat. So it's not like he, it was yesterday, like he rejected it straight away. Um, this issue of that istiqlal al-fi'l, istiqlal al-fi'l, that's exactly what I read in Muhammad Sa'id al-Mamduh's kitab, Hassan Ali Saqaf. Oh, you can speak for your time when it comes, inshallah. Before he was a guy I used to look up to, now he became a rafidi when he insulted Muawiyah. Before he was a hamul liwa al-jarh wa ta'adil, when he wrote Tanaqud al-Albani. The point is, Muhammad Zahid al-Kawthari, Muhammad, Muhammad Sa'id Mamduh and the likes of them, and the likes of, the likes of them, are this argument they put forward, which is what, brothers? The argument is that if you're calling on to other than Allah and you don't believe that this thing you're calling on to other than Allah is doing it, you don't think he's independently able to do it. You know Allah is the one who does it. Allah is the one who does it. But you're asking this, then this is not a problem. Brothers, 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 this is exactly what Kufar al-Quraysh, look. قُلْ مَنْ بِيَدِهِ مَلَكُوتُ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ Who is the one that the whole affairs is in his hand? Who is the one who controls everything? وَهُوَ يُجِيرُ وَلَا يُجَارُ عَلَيْهِ The Kufar of quraysh when they asked, who is the one who controls his affairs, does everything? What was their answer? فَسِقُونَ اللَّهِ Allah, this is their statement, Allah, nothing else, Allah they're saying to you. They're saying to these actions that our, all of it is done by Allah. استقلال الفعل كفار قريش وكثرت. This is the خلل. This is the deficient. ولذلك ponder with me on this ayah. Please ponder with me. This was silence a big argument, which is the نفع 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 in which he keeps bringing. Allah says in the Quran ويعبدون they worship. Pay attention here. ويعبدون the idol worshippers, the كفار of قريش they worship what? ويعبدون من دون الله they worship besides Allah. What do they worship? ما لا يضرهم that which can't harm them. وَلَا يَنْفَعُهُمْ And it doesn't benefit them. And then Allah says, وَيَقُولُونَ And they say, this is their claim, هَأُولَئِ شُفَعَوْنَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ These are our intercessors. Why don't they say these are our benefiters? Why don't they say these are the things that benefit? Because they didn't believe that they benefited them. They didn't affirm a naf'a for the things that they were begging. They knew the naf'a was from who? Allah. So why this? Intercessors. Please listen to what As- Asrar said. Ponder behind maqalatim is exactly what they're saying. Let me repeat it again. Wa they worship. 
min duni Allahi besides Allah. Ma la yadurun that which can't harm them. Wa la yansa'uhum and that which cannot benefit them. So Allah is saying to you, these, are, these things that you're worshipping, they can't harm you, nor can they benefit you. Wa yaquluna and their claim is, is their claim, or oh, they benefit us and they're saying, oh Allah, you're wrong, they do benefit us. Or they're saying, no, they're just our intercessors. They only intercede on our behalf so we can get to you, Allah. Is that what the argument is? In another place, this is what they were saying about as what Allah said subhanahu wa ta'ala about them is نعبدهم, We do not worship them Allah, except to get us closer to who? So the kuffar of Quraysh never believed in their right mind that the idols or the things that they were begging had istiqlal al-fi'l. They never believed that the idols were the creators and the sustainers and the providers. They knew all of that was for Allah. But the reason why they did not want to worship Him alone is where the problem came from. Okay, Asrar, why haven't you still defined this wasila? Why haven't you defined it first? Rather, why haven't you accepted the definition I gave you in wasila from who? Al Raghib al Asfahani, rahimahullah. Al Asfahani, however you want to say it. Ibn Manzur. Uh, also, Fayruza Abadi. Al Jawhar. All of them, they define it as what? Talabul Awni, asking for help. When you're in times of hardship, as sarar until now has not given us the definition of al-wasila. And that was the, one of the what, backbones of our contract. You see, uh, and we asked for it. Another time he said, my istidlal. as sarar you hear him say, my istidlal? This is my istidlal, he said. Wow, didn't I mention that in the part of my 15 minutes when it was mine? Didn't I say, stop that, it's not good. We're, we're followers, we follow the companions. This is our job. Any khair there is out there, the Sahabas preceded us in it. We need to follow them. Allah Ta'ala commanded us. Look what he said. وَمَنْ يُشَاقِقِ الرَّسُولَ Anyone who goes against the Prophet's path. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Anyone who goes against the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's path. سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And also follows a path other than the path of the believers. Who were the believers the ayah came down on first? Who were, who were alive at that time when the ayah came down? Was it not the companions? So Allah said, if you follow a path other than the path of the believers, who is, who is the believers here? The Sahaba is number one. My istilal. My istilal. And then he said to me again, add to your clause of the definition. No, I don't add anything. I don't. I follow my ulam, my the Sahabas. I follow the Quran and the Sunnah. That's what I do. I don't add anything. This is the problem here. Adding and deduct from it. And you Jews and you. That's the problem we are suffering from. Add to your clause this. Take away from your clause this, your definition. This is exactly what he said. I wrote it as soon as he said it. Ajib. Qaraba. This is the problem. And then he brought the concept of shafa'a. Brothers, is our discussion about shafa'a? Are we talking about shafa'a? What we're discussing, is it, does it say in the contract that this is shafa'a? But this is hurub. Running away from the mawdu al-niza'a. Not coming with the issues that are needed. Then he brings the concept of uh, al-shirk. What is it? Muhalan. Um, um, what is it in, uh, in terms of shar'an? Um, what is it in terms of what do you call it? Aqlan. This is what his concept is. He keeps bringing it up. I asked him, what aql do you want? Whose aql are you referring to? Did you guys not hear me when I said that before? Whose aql are you referring to? Abu Hamid al-Ghazali. Are you referring to um, uh, uh, al-Fawrak, by the way? It's Fawrak. And it's amazing because Abu Bakr ibn Fawrak is one of the heads of Ash'ariya. If you can't pronounce his name correctly, and also you're denouncing Fakhruddin al-Razi and al-Amidi and al-Juwaini, all of their concepts in... I'm, I'm questioning your Ash'ariya right now. I have the rights to question your Ash'ariya. Your Imams, you can't pronounce their names correctly. You're also suffering on the issue of accepting their concepts and taking it on. I'm not an Ash'ari and I've taken time out to study about the Ash'ari works. That's the jeep. Okay. So I'm saying to you, when you ask me a question and I ask you to explain that question for me, don't keep bringing it up. I asked you which aql are you referring to? Whose aql? Which aql? Where? Which? Because aql for you guys is different than what we're talking about. Um, he then asked me about the issue of istiqrar naqis or istiqrar, istiqrar tam. He asked me about istiqrar. You know istiqrar is of two types. Not all of them are dhani. There's istiqrar, 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 naqis, and there's an istiqrar which is tam. I'll give you guys an istiqrar which is tam that no one can go against right now. Pay attention. I mean, you think Salafis don't study ilm al-mantiq? 
That's what you guys thought coming here. Sulam al Murawnaq. We studied that at its time and in its place by Al Akhdari, Abdul Rahman Al Akhdari. <laughs> this is something you guys have to take serious, brothers. Don't get. Salafis do study Ilm al Mantiq. They look at it. We teach it and we taught it and we te- we're teaching it, inshallah, soon. That being the case, that was the side. That being the case, ولذلك محمد الأمين الشقيط رواه بوكن علم المنطقي أدب البحث والمناظرة. What is it? محمد الأمين الشقيط رحمه الله, the great scholar. He wrote a book on أدب البحث والمناظرة. Here is some of his works. دار علم الفوائد. The point is, استقراء is of two types, my brothers. استقراء which is tam and استقراء which is ناقص. How many t- grammarians who are sitting here? And I heard, mashallah, you specialize in علم النحو, grammar. You went to, uh, mashallah, Damishq and studied grammar. The kalima in the Arabic language, word, how many types is it categorized into? Isim fi'lana, harf. Isn't that istiqra tam? It's istiqra tam. Nobody can ever come and say the kalima is of more than three than isim fi'lana harf. No one can ag- go against that. And istiqra tam. And inshallah, tuhidu al rububiyya and uluhiyya and isma'a sifat is istiqra tam, which you can't add anything to it. Just like fi'il, harf, and isim. You took it from me, or you took it from the grammarians, more like take inshallah ta'ala from the salaf. Ibn Jarir al-Tabari, Abu Hanifa, and the likes of them, that the Tawheed is three types, inshallah ta'ala. This is called istiqra. If you didn't have that in your notebook, add it to it. Istiqra, tam. Tam is added to it, inshallah ta'ala. Um, Allahi, my time is full of barakah. Ya. Allah, dua lillahi wahda. The issue of, walau annahum idhalamu, barakallahu fiqh. Abu Taymiyyah came into place. Allahu Akbar. As usual. ولو أنهم إظلموا، he said this آية قضية عين لا عموم لها. that's what I said. that ولو أنهم إظلموا that آية came down at that time and is referring to that time. the same way وإذ يمكر بك الذين إذ قضية عين لا عموم لها. it's the same إذ. so I'm saying to you why do you accept the word وإذ يمكر؟ don't take it generally. because you say it's قضية عين لا عموم لها. then why don't you do the same for this؟ إن شاء الله تعالى. it's the same. don't don't go around that issue. you didn't answer it for me when I brought it. So I thought we were going to go over that one, inshallah ta'ala. The last other point is, who from the Sahabas understood it when the Prophet died? Who? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Man kana mustannan fal yastanna bi man qad mata fa inna al-hayya la tu'man alayhi al-fitna. If you want to hold on to somebody, hold on to the Sahabas. Always ask yourself, how did the Sahabas understand this? When this ayah came down, you see the Sahabas never went to the Prophet's grave and said, Ya Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, forgive us. We've done so many mistakes in our lives. They never did it. And the fact that they did not do it is a proof to us. Because any good there is out there, the Sahabas would have hastened to it. Allah said about them, Muhammadur Rasulullah, Walladheena, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Walladheena ma'ahu ashiddaw ala al-kuffari ruhama'u baynahum, tarahum ruk'a'an sujjadan, yabtaguna fadlan min Allahi wa ridwana. The Sahabas, if you see them, they're in ruku', they're in sujood. Yabtaguna, all they look for is what? Fadl, virtue from Allah. Ridwan, that's all they want to get. That's all their life is, the Sahabas. And they chose fadlan min Allahi wa ridwana. See, I'll read it all for you. See, ma fi wujud min athari sujud dhalika mathalun fi tawrat wa mathalun fi l-injili. Ka zar'in akhraja shat'ahu fa'azaru fa'astaghlada fa'astawa ala suqi. Yu'jibu zurra'a li yagheeda bihim al-kufara. Wa'adallahu al-lazheena amunu amunu salahati minkum ajran. Minhum, minkum ajran. Wa'adallahu al-lazheena amunu amunu salahati minkum maghfiratan wa ajran azima. Muhammadur Rasulullah. Those people, are they going to leave out if they knew that they can go to the Prophet's grave and get his forgiveness? Would they have left it? <laughs> Abu Bakr, who the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, in Sahih al-Bukhari, لو كنت متخذا من أهل الأرض خليلا لاتخذت أبا بكر خليلا. If I was to ever take a closest friend on the face of this earth, I would have taken Abu Bakr. The man Abu Sa'id al-Khudri said, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, اختارك, اخت, uh, عبد اختاره الله تبارك وتعالى, a slave who Allah gave that Prophet, that man, a choice between this dunya and the hereafter. And what did the Sahabas see? They saw Abu Bakr in the crowd just crying. And they said, why is he crying for? The Prophet is talking about a man who was, a man who was given the choice of this dunya and in the hereafter. And he chose what? فاختار ما عند الله, he chose that which is with Allah. What's, what's there to cry about? But then look, Abu Bakr knew that the person that the Prophet was talking about was who? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that it was him. And then Abu Sa'id al-Khudri said, وَكَانَ And he was Abu Bakr, the one who knew the Prophet the most. The Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abu Bakr, who his companion, the year when the people apostated and they left Islam, why didn't he say, Ya Rasulullah, Madad? 
Ya Rasulullah, madad, help us, we need aid. Lakin he said, Wallahi law mana'uni iqalan kanu ya uddu nawa ila Rasulillah qataltum alayha. He took matters in his own hand. Wallahi, if they refuse to give me a rope which they used to give to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I will fight with them for it. Brothers, misguidance occurs when you turn away from the path of the Sahabas. When you take a path other than path. as I advise you and myself, stay away from my, my, me, I, stay away from these terms. Submit and adhere to the companions and their way. There is no salvation, there is no khair except following them. That's our methodology, that's what we call to. We say the kitab and the sunnah according to how the salaf, the pious predecessors understood it. Sahaba, tabi'een, tabi'u, tabi'een. Why? Because of the hadith of Imran ibn Hussein. Khayru nasi qarni, thumma alladheena yalunahum, thumma alladheena yalunahum. The best of generations are my generation, the generations who come after and those who come after. That's virtue. Like in me, I, he, that doesn't get you anywhere. And it will get you tired just like it got Fakhruddin al-Razi tired. It will get you tired just like you got Abu Amali al-Jawaini tired. And they all got confused and they all started saying we wasted our times. Until they placed a hand on their cheeks and out of confusion, the same is going to happen to you. Just take it, Wallahu a'lam wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa afqulu salati wa tamu taslim ala ashraf al-anbiya'i Sayyidina Muhammadi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in There are a few points which were mentioned previously which need clarification regarding Rabb and Tawheed Rububiya Question which will clarify this for everyone When a polytheist goes into the grave and the angels ask him man rabbuka if the polytheist had Tawheed Rububiya he will say Allah but in fact, the polytheist will not say Allah. The Muwahid who has Tawheed Billah will only say Allah. So Tawheed Rububiya was not found amongst the polytheists of Makkah al So This is a point you need to answer in order to establish that they had Tawheed Rububiya. I also said that the Quran mentions Arbaban min dunillah. Arbaban min dunillah is inclusive of Tashri'ah. Anyone who believes other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives law, is shari' this would fall into shirk, shirk billah. So the Qurayshi polytheists did not have tawheed rububiyya. Then you said that I affirm tawheed rububiyya and I affirm this uh, taqseem, this, these types of tawheed. I said to you in our discussion previously when we met that when I say we affirm the difference between us and those who make this taqseem uh, or teach this taqseem in the manner that you do is that we say the mushrikeen did not have tawheed rububiya while you claim that they do have tawheed rububiya and you said through istiqra you will show uh, that they uh, did have tawheed rububiya you mentioned also that that you contradicted yourself as well. If you, when the video will be uploaded, you will note that you said in your statement first that you agree with me what I said regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creating qudra within the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to help in his al-hayatul barzakhiyah. You agreed with me on this point. But then you went further ahead to liken those asking from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa in al-barzakh to the mushrikeen mentioning wa ya'buduna min dunillah ya'budun therefore you believe istighatha is ibadah istighatha is ibadah is this not the case that istighatha is ibadah so istighatha should always be ibadah you can't change ibadah from one thing uh, from someone being alive and you say it's not ibadah, when they die it becomes ibadah. This is a contradiction of the aql and when you say the aql, what aql do I mean? Do I mean the um, intellect of Imam al-Razi or the intellect of Imam al-Ghazali? I mean your aql. What judgment do you give in your aql, in your intellect? You studied mantiq, you said you studied mantiq, you mentioned, you said as al murawnaq when it's as al munawraq yeah, the work by Abdul Rahman al-Akhdari, rahimullah, was, by the way, was Ashari, but that's a separate issue. Istiqra, you said, was two types. You mentioned istiqra was two types. This uh, um, uh, studying mantiq and establishing istiqra, where is this methodology from Quran and Sunnah? 
This is why scholars wrote books like Sawnul Mantiq, Against Mantiq. In fact, uh, uh, certain scholars like Jalaluddin al-Suyuti and uh, Ibn Taymiyyah mentioned that uh, Mantiq is a bid'ah. Nevertheless, you said, وَيَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ means istighatha. So therefore, you have to respond to this point. I said previously, if you went and said, istighatha now through the Prophet ﷺ is haram and not shirk and kufr in the way that the Ash'aris and the Maturidis, because I said the Maturidis are also Ahl Sunnah. I don't limit Ahl Sunnah to the Ash'aris. The Ash'aris and the Maturidis, the way they do tawassul and istighatha is just haram, then this would be a mas'ala fiqhiyya. It's a fiqh debate. But because you declare it kufr and shirk, and this is inclusive of a whole group of ulama, a whole group of ulama, this leads to takfir of other Muslims declaring them disbelievers without understanding what they mean by istighatha. Now, if the brothers who take this position changed from saying it's kufr and shirk and declaring people mushrikeen, they said it is haram, according to the scholars we follow, the whole subject would be different. For instance, look at this text. Uh, the scholar who I'm quoting states, فَإِنَّ الشَّفَاعَةَ نَوْعٌ مِنَ الدَّمَاءِ مِنَ الدُّعَاءِ كَمَا قَالَ إِنَّهُ مَنْ صَلَّ عَلَيْهِ مَرَّةً صَلَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ بِهَا عَشْرًا That the word dua comes, uh, the word shafa'a is a type of dua. So when you say dua is kufr, which I also say dua is kufr, what do we mean? We mean ibadah min dunillah, but not shafa'a. In the same way, istighatha has its rules and applications. If the person believes that the one he is seeking help from is independent of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he is a mushrik. But if he believes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this ability in that, the most you can say is they are mistaken in saying that. But we would will establish that we are not mistaken saying that regarding Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Going back to Tawheed Rububiyyah, when Sayyiduna Ibrahim alayhi salam said, قَالَ هَذَا رَبِّي this he was questioning, meaning he was establishing a proof against the polytheists, they worshipped stars. And he said, in order to refute them, is this my Lord, this is how you translate it, not that he believed this was his Lord. When he said, Qala hadha Rabbi, he was refuting them in which Tawheed? Tawheed Rububiya. They established, they done shirk in Tawheed Rububiya. They did not believe in Allah as being one. Otherwise in the grave, when they be asked, Man Rabbuka, they would reply, Allah. The angels would ask, should ask, Man ilahuka, who is your Lord? Even in the verse, in, alihatun, in Surah Al-Anbiya, the verse is inclusive about Tawheed Rububiyyah and Tawheed Uluhiyyah. Then you asked for a definition of wasila. Definition of wasila, as mentioned by the chairman, was not a part of the contract. Now, Ustaz Abdul Rahman, attention to the following point. Rububiyyah would be Tadbirullahi lil khalq. Tadbirullahi lil khalq. And Uluhiyyah would be Qudra. Qudratullah. If Rububiyyah, which it is, is Tadbirullahi lil khalq, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala controls everything in the universe. No one beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do not believe the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam controls the universe. We believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created in him an ability to benefit the ummah. But that is the way he benefited them when he was alive. So it is not shirk. He doesn't share with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala running the universe billah, like the mushrikeen believed regarding the idols. This is the meaning of Tawheed Rububiyyah, Tadbirullahi lil khalq. And Uluhiyyah would mean Qudratullah, the divine power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And more meanings, more ma'ani, not just limited to those two meanings. But Qudratullah, he can, the divine power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot be separated from the divine uh, uluhiyah, cannot be separated from rububiyah. If you negate one, you negate the other. If someone says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala controls the universe, but I reject his divine power, he automatic, automatically negates Tawheed rububiyah. If he, be, he says, I believe in Tawheed rububiyah, and he rejects Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's power, he's rejected in effect Tawheed rububiyah. And the other way around, if he says uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has power, but someone else controls the universe, he, he negates the other. So negating one is negating the other. This is why I would say, in, fa in effect, you are doing taqlid of 
just the works of Ahmed bin Taymiyyah and those who followed him in this particular position, we would say they are mistaken in this, but we don't declare them kuffar. We don't declare them disbelievers. We don't declare Ahmed bin Taymiyyah or the followers of Ahmed bin Taymiyyah as being disbelievers. Then I would want to ask Tawheed Hakimiyah, that Tawheed Hakimiyah, another group of people established Tawheed Hakimiyah. Did this pass your istiqra? When you did istiqra, why did one group of Salaf, the Salafi movement establish Tawheed Hakimiyah and you've missed out Tawheed Hakimiyah? Regarding all these points, you said, regard, uh, uh, I'm going to press the last question and then I'm going to present my evidence from the hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that you still have not answered my question regarding shirk. Is, uh, is shirk muhal aqlan or muhal shar'an? There is a reason why you have avoided this question. And going to our proof for tawassul and istighatha through the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not just through Al-Qur'an Al-Kareem. وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَأَنْتَ فِيهِمْ is a verse which Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala states, Allah will not punish them as long as you are amongst them. We do not believe this is only in the lifetime of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's also now. Why doesn't this nation get punished like all the previous other nations? Every sin you find in all the other previous nations, you find in this nation. Yet Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala does not punish this Ummah. Why? Because وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَأَنْتَ فِيهِمْ Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will not punish them as long as you are amongst them. Amongst us meaning he's alayhi salatu wasalam. How is he amongst us? I'll answer that. The body of the Prophet ﷺ is in the grave. The body of the Prophet ﷺ is in the grave. And um, the Prophets pray in their graves. And the Prophet ﷺ prays for us. This doesn't mean the Prophet ﷺ lives amongst us. No, it doesn't mean he's here. It means the Prophet ﷺ is in Al-Madinatul Munawwara, in his grave, and he prays for his nation. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has accepted his prayer and does not punish the entire nation. These questions regarding Tawheed Rububiyyah, Tawheed Hakimiyah, and uh, are need to be answered, otherwise you fall into the khata of making a similarity between idol worshippers and Muslims. If you descended a notch and said, the uh, uh, Subki, uh, Ibn Kathir, al Zahabi, uh, uh, all these other scholars who allowed Tawassul and Istighatha, all of them were on khata, they are mistaken, and they did haram, but they did not do kufr and shirk or promote kufr and shirk, the debate would be less than what it already is. But because you take the position it is kufr and shirk, mutlaq, am, make this a, a general judgment, then what ends up occurring is that people declare other Muslims kufar. They believe that they, they are, it's permissible to kill them. It's per, not that you promote this. This is a natija, thamara of this belief that they kill them as mushrikeen, they take their women as slave girls. And this, this happened in the time of Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab when the Eastern Arabian Peninsula they took over the Western Hijaz, they did this and in the time of the Ottomans and this is happening today in Iraq and Syria where they declare people kuffar on an assumption. If a person has, uh, they have a doubt regarding him, they declare him kuffar. Regarding uh, seeking uh, help from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there are a hadith from the companions Alayhim Ridwan which allude to this and this is what Abdul Rahman Mention Raf'ul Manara uh, of uh, uh, Sheikh Mahmoud Mamdouh. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, I've never mentioned Mah uh, Sheikh Mahmoud Mamdouh in my speeches as a hujja, as a proof, or his work, Raf'ul Manara, or relied on his work for Takhrij al Hadith. But I will say something. When you weaken any Rijal al Hadith which I will present, you cannot present Rijal, Kalam uh, Rijal. Uh, from the books of the Asha'ira. Because you said regarding Mawardi, you said uh, Mawardi in the Abu Bira de debate 47, uh, 47 minutes and two seconds, you said, and Imam Mawardi, he's from Ahlul Kalam. First of all, he is Ash'ari, Al Quh. Mawardi is from Ahlul Batil, Ahlul Bid'ah. He's from the Asha'ira, from the Mutakallimin. And for us to leave Ibn Taymiyyah and to say we are not going to take Ibn Taymiyyah and we will leave, take Mawardi, Wallahi fi nadar. So if you take Asha'ira when it comes to Asma'ul Rijal, Wallahi fi nadar, ala hasbi ma taqul. So here I'll give you a few narrations. In the Musnad of Abi Ya'la, we have uh, in the Musnad of Abi Ya'la, Rahmallah. 
that with the chain of narration from Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid radiallahu an, qala Khalid ibn al-Walid, i'tamarna ma'an nabiyyi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi umratin, i'tamaraha fa halaqa sha'rahu, fa stabaqa al-nasu ila sha'ri, fa sabaqtu ila al-nasiyati fa akhathtuha, fa attakhathtu qalan suwatan, fa ja'altuha fi muqaddimati al-qalan suwati, fa ma wujihtu fi wajhin illa futiha li. Sayyidina Khalid radiallahu an, sayfun min suyufillah, from... Buried now in where? In Hims. He states, we done a minor pilgrimage, Umrah, with the Prophet ﷺ in a pilgrimage that we did. The Messenger of Allah ﷺ shaved his head, which is in Ji'rana. And people went to take the hair. Ji'rana. Shaddatullah. Jazakumullah khairan. Fastabaqa nasu ila sha'rihi. Check if it's Shaddatullah or not. فَسَبَقْتُ إِلَى النَّاصِيَةِ I went to the forehead. فَأَخَذْتُهَا I took the hair. فَاتَّخَذْتُ قَلًا سُوَةً I took a hat. And I placed this in the front part of my hat. Meaning the hair of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I was not faced by an enemy. Except Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala gave me victory. If a hair of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam can help. You've been given extra two minutes on this matter and he'll have two minutes added to it. I don't agree to that. No? No. Wallahi, the points are a lot. The shubuhat are qattafa. The shubuhat, they throw at the, they're throwing at the heart and they're qattafa. They will harm you. But inshallah ta'ala, we're here to clean it from the hearts before it settles in. Inshallah ta'ala. May Allah, Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hulul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. Allow my tongue to flow by telling the truth. It's amazing, as she does not understand the ayah that I brought to him before, which I'm still going to bring to him again. <coughs> Allah clearly says, وَمَا يُؤْمِنُ أَكْثَرُهُمْ بِاللَّهِ إِلَّا وَهُمْ مُشْرِكُونَ Do you want me to write on the board for you? Or the glass? And we put it on the screen. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala is affirming Iman for the mushrikeen. What Iman is He refer- affirming for them? By now, I think everybody's memorized it. It's Tawheedu al You want to go against ayat. With what? A statement that you said, a scholar said. Who is that? By the way, what was that book you were reading from? You did not mention the name of who the Shaykh was. You quoted him. Why hide it for? Ibn Taymiyyah. Then why don't you tell us it's Ibn Taymiyyah? Because you banned it. Uh, no, that wasn't it. No, 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 that wasn't the book. You read from another book, a Kalam Shafa'a. Shafa'a. You read it from this book. Jameel, Labas. It's Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. La, la, la. The, the concept, the reason you don't mention the name is an important thing to us. It's a referencing. Ridalik Ibn Sirin said, Al-Isnadu, Mina Dini, Walaul al-Isnadu, Laqala man sha'a ma sha'a. The Isnad is what? It's your religion. And if it wasn't the chain, everybody would have claimed what they claimed. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, if he's a hujjah for you, I have his book, shall I read it on you? Are you going to take it? If I bring you Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah's works, are you going to take it? And you, would you use it? I have it, barakallah fiqh. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, if I bring you his kitab, Qa'idatul Jalila fi tawassul al wasila are you going to take it? If I, no, no, I know you have it, mashallah. The tab'ah is very weak anyways that you have. But that being said, it's very weak, tab'ah al-radhila. The point being, if I bring you the statement of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, are you going to take it on board in the sense it's going to be a proof against you? Or are you those? You take what you want, you leave what you want. This is an amazing. Either take it as it is or leave it. I'm sure Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah will not please you. He will not definitely please you. Um, you said the issue of istighatha, um, is that if it's an ibadah, then why is it then sometimes permissible and sometimes not permissible? My question to you is, we're not legislators. The Lord who created the heaven and the earth, what he tells us, we hear and we obey. Allah said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that calling onto the dead is shirk. Allah said that. أَمَّنْ يُجِيبُ الْمُضَّرَّ إِذَا دَعَى وَيَكْشِفُ السُّوءَ وَيَجْعَلُكُمْ خُلَفَاءَ الْأَرْضِ أَإِلَاهُمْ مَعَ اللَّهِ Allah is saying this. وَمَنْ أَظَلُّ مِمَّا يَدْعُو مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ مَنْ لَا يَسْتَجِيبُ لَهُ إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ وَهُمْ عَنْ دُعَائِهِمْ غَافِلُونَ Allah is saying this. And the same Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that when these three conditions are met حَيٌّ حَاضِرٌ بِمَا يَقْدِرُ عَلَيْهِ That is permissible. فَاسْتَغَاثَهُ الَّذِي مِنْ شِيَعَةِ عَلَى الَّذِي مِنْ عَدُوِي So how did I distinguish between the two? آية أنا آية. Because Ahlul Sunnah, what do they do? What do they do? They bring all the evidences together. Ahlul Bid'ah, what do they do? هو الذي أنزل عليك الكتاب منه آيات محكمات هن أم الكتاب وأخر متشابهات فأما الذين في قلوبهم زيغ فيتبعون ما تشابه منه ابتغاء الفتنة وابتغاءها 
وما يعلم تأويله إلا الله والراسخون في العلم يقولون آمنا به كل من عند ربنا وما يذكر إلا أولي الباب. The only take was for them. He will he bring one ayah and he will run around with it. But the ayat are mutashabi and muhkam. Bring the mutashabi back to the muhkam and let the muhkam determine it for you. Again, you said we say asrar. I thought we overcame that concept. Stop using the word we. We're not legislators. We're not the ones who give command. We're followers of the companions. I hope I've drilled that information into you. Say, العلم قال الله قال الرسول قال الصحابة هم ذوي العرفان ما العلم نفس ما العلم نسبك للخلاف سفاهة بين الرسول وبين رأي فقيه علم is قال الله قال الرسول قال الصحابة. That's our religion. We don't have this statement of we say we say we say. I'm going to now ask you another question, إن شاء الله تعالى. Make it easy and dumb it down and simplify it so everybody can listen. And a question which is directly towards you. That question is, Iblis said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbi fa'andhirni ila yawm yub'athun. Rabbi. Rabbi. My Lord. Fa'andhirni, wait for me. Ila yawm yub'athun. If rububi and uluhi is the same, then shaitan is a mu'min, muwahid. Tawheed for him is on point. Subhanallah. Subhanallah, who's going to say that? Well, I'm going to even add up, make it worse for the concept to go even more. Fir'aun, Allah said about him. وَجَحَدُوا بِهَا وَاسْتَيْقَنَتْهَا أَنفُسُهُمْ ظُلْمًا وَعُلُوًا Fir'aun affirmed Allah's rububiyya. Is that it? Musa came to him and he said to him, لَقَدْ عَلِمْتَ مَا أَنزَلَ هَؤُلَا إِلَّا رَبُّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ رَبُّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Musa is looking Fir'aun in the eyes and he's saying to Fir'aun, Fir'aun, you know. Don't be behind the bushes. You know that you're not ilah. And you know that all of this I'm reading on you hasn't come to you except from Allah. But what did Fra'un choose to not do? It's uluhiyah, brothers. Uluhiyah. And this is why Ibn Arabi became a muwahid according to some people. I don't know if he holds that view. But some say Ibn Arabi is a muwahid. And Ibn Arabi, who, this is the problem why Ibn Arabi said Iblis is a mu'min. And Fir'aun is a mu'min. Because Tawheed al rububiyah and uluhiyah was not distinguished. The same way you falsely accuse us of this concept which I said, Akhi, please, it's, you're drilling an information into the people's minds by saying you kill women or the killing of women and permitting... The, why in the context of istighatha, ya Rab, ya Akh? Istighatha we're talking about. Why do you mention the concept of women and killing... It just doesn't... Why? Why would we mention that? It's nothing to do with this. Are we talking about that now? Are we talking about the hurma of the dima'ul muslimin? The reason why I don't want to let that to slip through is because it's a concept that's going to be planted in the listener's mind. We are against it. We don't allow it. The hurma, the blood of the Muslims is sacred. The Prophet came to the Kaaba and he said, Ma'adhamaha, what's more honorable than you? Ma ashara, what's more greater than you? Illa damru muslimin. Except the blood of the believers. The Kaaba to be destroyed. La zawalu dunya ahwanu indallahi min qatl muru'il muslimin. This whole world to perish is easier in the eyes of Allah than a blood of a Muslim to spill. That's how much we look at hurma to demand muslimin. So stop bringing this, these little information that you're throwing in. As Shaykh Al-Alama, you mentioned his name. The issue of Tawheed Al-Hakimiyyah that you brought. Um, if you want, we can make a discussion on that. And we can go into it one time and have a fruitful discussion. But I don't know if we can get to Tawheed Al-Hakimiyyah if we differ on Tawheed Al-Rububiyyah and Uluhiyyah. <laughs> Tawheed Al-Hakimiyyah, those who brought it, they came after the Salaf. And we take it because the Salaf did not mention it. And that's our policy. We're consistent upon it. We have no... We have no one from within the Salaf. We don't have no one from within the Salaf who said that Tawheed is three types. Rather, Tawheed al Hakimiya, it falls under Tawheed al Uluhiya and Tawheed al Rububiya. So, why would somebody have to make it? Yeah, my time should be full. Cool, it? it can't be, huh? Tawheed al Hakimiya is what? It's under that particular point. The issue of asking me a shirk muhalan shar'an or aqlan, I answer it for you. The aql that you're referring to, you said to me, I want your aql. Hey, then what, what about Abu Taymiyyah? You want his aql as well? Hey, what about these brothers? We have different aqls in this room. So how have you governed it and narrowed it down to my aql? That itself needs a question. Um, you said the ayah, Allah wa ta'ala, you said that the prophets are in their graves, they pray for the nation. Where did you get that concept from? They pray for the nation and they make istighfar for the nation. And because of their existence, no, you said because they're in their qubur and they're praying, Allah is sending forgiveness on this ummah. I want a delete for that. You claim that, we want your evidence for that. Anna anyone who affirms a hukum shari has to bring an evidence for it. Any, these are masail ghaybiyah. You said, ana sha'iran ma turidiya ahlu sunnah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet said, my ummah is divided into how many three? I'm going to divide into how many three? 
73. All of them are in the hellfire except what? Sha'ira ma turidiyah too. How do you say both of them are sunnah? The Prophet said all of them are in hellfire except what? One. And you're saying a sha'ira ma turidiyah, both of them are upon the haq. And they differ on matters of usul, usul, usul. And they're both ahl sunnah. Kayf? The Prophet doesn't know how to say two. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is brothers, wallahi, I'm sitting here and I'm amazed. These are badahiyat, masail, issues which are simplistic, easy to understand. We believe a sha'ira and ma turidiyah are not from ahl sunnah. Ahl sunnah are those who go back to the kitab and the sunnah be fahmi salaf al-salih. Uh, Ibn, Hash, Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, al-Bayhaqi, al-Nawawi, we were differing with you if they even are a sha'ira. So don't say that, don't bring me a senate which are a sha'ira. First we have to talk about, who do we agree that are from the a sha'ira? Who do we agree that are from the? Just because somebody agreed with a group in a matter, does that make them part of that group? This is a question we need to ask. Just because I agreed with a group of people in a particular issue, does that make me from them? And I asked him a question, he never answered it. And he will never. Where did Imam ibn Hajar ever say I'm an Ash'ari? Where did Imam al nawawi ever say I'm an Ash'ari? Where did Imam al bayhaqi ever say I'm an Ash'ari? Bring me one statement of this. How are you going to speak for them? How are you going to speak for them? Ibn Hajar knows himself. And he never ever said I'm an Ash'ari. Wala nawawi wala al bayhaqi But you choose to force him under those, under those names. Um, my time actually is very good. You brought the issue of um, Qadiyya of the Prophet Sallallahu hair. That's a whole different issue of Qadiyya to Tabarruk. Is the Prophet an issue of Barakah? We can have that discussion. Why are you running from Istighatha, Istighatha? We're talking about Istighatha. Khalid ibn Walid's issue is Haydah al Mawrid al-Niza'a. You study Ibn al mantiq This is what it is. You're running away from the point of discussion. We are discussing Istighatha. I can write it for you. Akhi also, bring me from, I said Ibn Abbas defined istighatha. I also said, Qatadat ibn Da'amat al-Sadusi. I brought his kalam, here it was. Sahih? Give me one man from the Salaf. We agreed on that contract that it has to be from the Salaf. Bring me one imam min aymat al-Salaf who said istighatha means this. We still have no definition from the Salaf for you who is this. What's istighatha? And you're, you're beating us, uh, you're going around in circles. And what amazes me, mashallah, is how you manage to listen how you've managed to memorize my statement in the debate of Abu Bara. Minutes, seconds, everything. Um, and Imam al mawardi rahimahullah, that's a whole different situation and a whole different discussion. But my statement did have a context. And it's fair that if you go to it and you listen to it from its context, you'll understand it even better. Like, I'll tell you one thing. Ibn Hajar was not like Mawardi. Ibn Hajar was not like Mawardi. al mawardi and Ibn Nawawi and Al Bayhaqi, Khan Ibn Al Bayhaqi and Nawawi and Ibn Hajar were Imma Salafiyin. They went against, they went against Ahlul Sun us in some issues, and they were Mujtahideen. And may Allah Tabarak wa Taala elevate Ibn Hajar and the likes of them in high status. Um, how long do I have left? Another thing I wanted to finally conclude. Three and a half minutes, and you've still got that question to answer. I have to answer it now. Okay, I'm going to answer it. This is my last time to answer it. Okay. He keeps bringing up the issue of benefiting. MashaAllah, a hadith came to my mind. The Prophet sallallahu he, he came by a, a dead corpse, alayhi salatu wasalam. And what did he say to the sahabas? He said, هل انتفعت, هل Why didn't you take the, why did you not take from this animal its skin and benefit from it? Based on that, the skin of the animal is a benefit for us. Is it not? Do we not use it for houses and clothing and whatnot? If I look around, many of you guys are wearing animal skin. Sahih? Now my question to you is, does that make it permissible to do istighatha on the animals? Does it make it because it benefited us? It's playing with the people's minds. Asrar, khabarul ahad, singular narration. The issue that we're talking about is aqidah. It hasn't gone. The issue is aqidah. And, you, and even that though you said I take khabar al-ahad in aqidah, I, I was amazed because the sheikh that you quoted yesterday, Sanusi and others, they clearly believe that khabar al-ahad is not taken. And now I want this from you, Asala Rashid, because it's part of our contract. I, have not, I don't keep bringing up the contract like you do. I don't like reading English. I read more Arabic. Is that... That question is, how do you choose when you want to agree with a scholar and when you choose not to agree with a scholar? 
Here you come and you say, I agree with Asha'ira on this and I differ with him on this. Are you a mujtahid? Who are you? You're not a mujtahid. You're a muqallid. You're a blind follower. And you're choosing what time you want to agree with the Asha'ira and what time you don't want to agree with the Asha'ira. يُحِلُّونَهُ عَامًا وَيُحَرِّمُونَهُ عَامًا لِيُوَطْعُدْ مَحَرَّمَ الله. The Kufar of Quraysh, what they used to do was, they had Ashhurul Hurum, months which they could not fight. And so whenever that month they wanted to fight, they would pull the month forward. And when they didn't want that month to fight, they would push the month and keep it in its place. All of that was based on what their whims and desires was like. So whenever you feel inclined, you take the statements of Asha'ira, Sunnusi, and Baqallani, and what do you call it, Abu Ma'ali, Al-Juwayn, Abu Muhammad. And when you don't like it, you say, I don't agree with them. But what principles do you disagree with them? And which principle do you not uh, agree with them? Last minute is the issue of calling onto the graves. Is it, first of all, we have to understand hara, kufr is always haram. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, قُلْ إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ رَبِّيَ الْفَوَاحِشَ مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا وَمَا بَطَنَ The beginning of the ayah was what? قُلْ إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ رَبِّيَ الْفَوَاحِشَ قُلْ إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ رَبِّيَ الْفَوَاحِشَ مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا وَمَا بَطَنَ وَالْإِثْمَ وَالْبَغْيَ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ وَأَن تُشْرِكُوا Shirk was mentioned in the context of what? Haram. Shirk is haram. And Allah tabarak wa ta'ala prohibits shirk and it's the greatest form of haram. It's the greatest haram. Anybody, my brothers, I say it now clearly, anybody who calls on to other than Allah is shirk akbar. Wallahu a'lam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After his death, after the person dies. I said anybody who calls on to a creation without the three conditions, my three conditions stand. Hayyun hadirun bima yaqdiru alayhi is shirk akbar. Wallahu a'lam. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. You, the con three conditions you mentioned, Hay Hadir and Qadir, present that from the Qawlu Salaf, not from Naql, transmission from Ibn Taymiyyah, because you are taking this from a secondary source. Sheikh Abdul Rahman, show that from a primary source, from the Salaf, with a chain of narration, that they place these three conditions. If you do not, you're showing it from a secondary source, your, your copying is invalid. How you done Talbis and placed a Shubha, you said Fir'aun affirmed Tawhid Rububiyyah. What did he say, Fir'aun? Ana Rabbukum al-A'la. Fir'aun said, Ana Rabbukum al-A'la. He said, I am your most Lord, most high. But at the same time, you quoted a verse where he calls upon Allah with the Rabb. He claimed Rabbubiyah for himself. You need to respond to that. And the same with Shaitan. If someone does istiqra tam of the verses of the Quran, you will find where, uh, uh, where Shaitan uh, also negates Tawheed Rabbubiyah. You mentioned Al-Hafiz ibn Hajar. Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Baz in his ta'liqat and the Fatul Bari calls him an Ash'ari on multiple places if you go and check that particular edition. Unfortunately, you gave the example of dead corpse benefiting by giving you leather or any some type of benefit. You believe a dead corpse can benefit you in some way. It can benefit you in some way. But you deny the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa can benefit you in any way. Istighatha and the same in the same way you cannot this is a disanalogy. It's a fallacy. You can't make an analogy of a Nabi when he passes away with the dead corpse of an animal. They're two different things. Uh, why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention that? Because the shaheed is different to a normal Muslim who dies. In the same way a prophet who die, uh, passes away, he is different to a normal Muslim who passes away. You keep asking about aql. Mantiq and Aql. You studied Mantiq. Give me the definition of Aql for Mantiq. You mentioned Sanusi and Khabrul Ahad. Again, I state to you very clearly, Sanusi has sharait, conditions for accepting Khabrul Ahad. Now, Al-Imam Al-Tabrani, Rahimullah. Regarding firstly, the hair of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you said this is Qadiyatul Tabarruk. Why would Sayyiduna Khalid, Radiallahu Anh, state, فَمَا وُجِهْتُ فِي وَجْهٍ إِلَّا فُتِحَ لِي I gained victory through the hair of the Prophet ﷺ, meaning I was faced and I would illa fi wajin, meaning my face, I was faced in battle except I got victory. If the hair of the Messenger of Allah ﷺ can give him victory by the will of Allah, not like idol worshippers, with, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creating that victory, why cannot the that, the very person of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, give benefit in the same way we have evidences in Al-Mu'jam al-Saghir of Tabrani. You know the hadith of Uthman bin Hunayf radiallahu an in Al-Mu'jam al-Saghir. Suleiman bin Ahmed al-Tabrani, you said in our initial discussion, Sheikh Abdul Rahman, you said al-Tabrani when he authenticates this hadith, he says, هذا حديث sahihun, he means the mat and not the sanad. 
Do you know there are only two parts in the Tabrani, in the three collections of Tabrani? Al Mu'jam al Sagheer, Al Mu'jam al Kabir, Al Mu'jam al Awsat, where he states a hadith is Hadha Hadithun Sahihun only twice. Only twice. At the Haddaq and bring three narrations from Tabrani where he would say in his books, Hadha Hadithun Sahihun, in the way he did say, and this rule you brought, you said, you made a rule, you said he, correct, he authenticates the matna and not the sanad. I want to see where you got that rule from. Did you mention it's in the Muqaddimah of uh, Sahih Muslim? It is. How could it be when Imam Muslim passed away in 261 and Imam Tabarani in 360? The Qaida before both of them. The Qaida, no, but the the now he's saying that the Qaida, you're not allowed to talk. The Qaida cannot be, bef uh, be the Qaida may be before, okay. But how do you know Imam Tabarani means this in his, because otherwise Tirmidhi says, هذا حديث صحيح. Each time uh, Imam Tirmidhi says, this is a hadith sahih, he means the matn and not the sanad, you'll have to answer this. After the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa passed away, Say, Sayyiduna Uthman bin Hanayf, you quoted the hadith of Sayyiduna Uthman bin Hunayf radiallahu an in your 40 uh, minute or something lecture which you did prior to our debate. You did not quote the hadith completely. You did not quote the hadith, the uh, initial hadith, the Tirmidhi hadith, the Musnad Imam Ahmad hadith, the Mustadraq al Imam al Hakim hadith. The hadith which has narrated, been narrated in Dala'ilun Nabuwa, numerous hadith books, where Sayyidina Uthman bin Hunayf, what was the wording Sayyidina Uthman bin Hunayf taught the man? What was the exact wording? In that wording, he has, Ya Muhammadu, sallallahu alayhi wa calls on the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Was this done by the companions after the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa passed away? Two points to note. The Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa taught the companion. The companion went away. The companion went away. The Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa was not present. He went and done wudu, he paid, prayed two rakats. This contradicts your conditions. You said in your conditions, the person must be hadir, the person must be hay, the person must be qadir, able to do so. The Prophet ﷺ was not present when the sahabi went, done wudu, prayed two rakats, done the dua. The Prophet ﷺ was not present. So where did you bring this shart from? Complete your istiqra of all the hadith. In the particular hadith, the Prophet ﷺ taught the man to say, Ya Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I use you as an intercession to Allah, not like the Mushrikeen, not like the polities when the Prophet Sallallahu was alive. And afterwards, Sayyidina Uthman bin Hunayf radiallahu an taught another man the same, uh, the same teachings. Is this hadith weak? No. Al-Imam Tabrani states it's sahih. Now you will either rely on Qaida Jalila, Fitwasul wal Wasila to try to weaken the hadith, or you will rely on Nasiruddin. Al Albani's work, which is regarding the Tawassul, we will see how you declare this hadith weak. Al Imam Al Tabrani himself, Al Imam Al Tabrani, Rahimullah, he himself practiced istighatha through the Prophet. So, according to your rules, if someone commits shirk, will you even accept the work of Al Imam Al Tabrani, Rahimullah, Al Hafiz Al Dhahabi, Rahimullah, in Sira Alam in Nubala, volume 16, the edition of Shu'ayb Al Arnaut, the edition of Shu'ayb Al Arnaut, on Page four, Arnaud. If the, the edition of Shwaib al Arnaud is regarding the story of uh, of Al Imam al Tabrani, rahimullah. What does he state? That they went. فَوَصَلْنَا ذَاتَ الْيَوْمِ فَلَمَّا كَانَ وَقْتُ الْإِشَاءِ حَضَرْتُ الْقَبْرَ. I went to the grave of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Not Al Imam al Tabrani, but the uh, Abu, uh, the uh, Kuntu ana wa tabrani, who is the narrator Ibn al Mukri states that wa kultu ya Rasulullahi al Jur, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, I have hunger. So what happened? Fakala li al Tabrani, Al Imam al Tabrani said, sit down. Al Imam al Tabrani from the Salaf Salihun, Ibn al Mukri from the Salaf Salihun, he said, sit down. He didn't say you're a mushrik kafir like an idol worshipper. He said, ijlis. فَإِمَّا إِنْ يَكُونَ الرِّزْقُ أَوْ الْمَوْتُ Either sustenance shall come or we shall die. What happened? فَقُمْتُ أَنَا وَأَبُوْ شَيْخْ فَحَضَرَ الْبَابَ عَلَوِيٌّ That I stood up and Abu Shaykh stood up and a Alawi came. فَفَتَحْنَا لَهُ We opened for him. فَإِذَا غِلْمَانٌ uh, That he mentions that some boys, uh, some slaves, they brought food and the person who sent the food states that I saw the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم رَأَيْتُهُ فِي النَّوْمِ I saw him in, the, uh, in my sleep. فَأَمَرَنِي بِحَمْلِ شَيْءٍ إِلَيْكُمْ And he ordered me to take things to you. How did the Prophet ﷺ appear in their dreams? We know, إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ لَا يَتَمَثَّلُ بِي Shaytan cannot appear in my form. We do not believe that the Prophets, uh, the prophets can be imitated by Shaytan in the sleep and awake. 
in Qaeda Jalila ibn Taymiyyah states it's possible for the shaitan to imitate the prophets in a wakeful state. He states that hadith fa'inna shaitan la yatamathalu bi is specific for sleep. Where did he get this taqsis from? There are so many taqsisat that the Salafi movement make. You know the hadith of Musannaf, of Ibn, not Al-Musannif, Al-Musannaf of Ibn Abi Shayba, not for you. But Ibn Abi... Can I say that? No, not you. Uh, it's a reference to some. So look, in case you bring up the same point with me, uh, uh, he mentions with his chain of narration uh, from Malik Adar, that Malik Adar, who was the treasurer of Sayyidina Umar, now we know that when you're referring to Raf'ul Manara and Tawassul Anwa'uhu wa Ahkamuhu, that there is niqash regarding the authenticity of these hadith. This niqash, again, you cannot present from the books of the Sha'ir why you are desperate to prove Ibn Hajar was not Ash'ari is because you will use his Lisan al Mizan, you will use his Tahdeeb al Tahdeeb, you will use his Taqrib al Tahdeeb. But you need to go back to the us in everything you quote, you need to go back to the original sources. In fact, according to the conditions we met out in the debate, you have to provide a chain of narration for every statement from a Salaf al Salihun. Anything you say, if Yahya bin Ma'in or Ali ibn Madini state something, you have to provide a chain of narration going back to them. Otherwise, it can be rejected. Not that I reject it necessarily, but according to the sharait, the conditions, chairman, according to the conditions, we have to present everything further check. Uh, uh, further check. So, uh, that in the time of Sayyidina Umar, there was a drought. You asked, why did he go to Sayyidina Abbas? But in the time of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an, فَجَاءَ الرَّجُلٌ إِلَىٰ قَبْرِ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ A man went to the grave of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and he said, إِسْتَسْقِي لِأُمَّتِكَ فَإِنَّهُمْ قَدْ هَلَكُوا Seek rain prayer for them, for they have perished. فَأُتِيَ الرَّجُلُ فِي الْمَنَامِ the man was approached in a dream, فَقِيلَ لَهُ It was said, اِئْتِ عُمَرَ Go to Umar, فَأَقْرِئُ salam. Give him my salam, because the Messenger of Allah is in Barzakh. He has a connection with his Ummah in Barzakh. وَأَخْبِرْهُمْ And inform them, أَنَّكُمْ مَسْقِيُونَ That water will be sent down for you. وَقُلْ لَهُ عَلَيْكَ الْكَيْسَ You must be intelligent. عَلَيْكَ الْكَيْسَ You must be intelligent. The man went to Sayyidina Umar رضي الله عنه. فَأَتَى عُمَرَ فَأَخْبَرَهُ And he informed him, فَبَكَ عُمَرُ Sayyidina Umar رضي الله عنه cried. ثُمَّ قَالْ يَا رَبِّي He said, Oh my Lord, لَا آلُوا إِلَّا مَا عَجَزْتُ عَنْهُ I only do what I am able to do. Now based on this, because they disagree with this hadith, they, it's Khabr al-Ahad. All of a sudden, they, they make a distinction between Khabr al-Ahad. You said Imam Sunusi makes a distinction between Khabr al-Ahad. You also make a distinction between Khabr al-Ahad and Mutawatir when it suits you. But we know that our scholars have done tahqiq on this. You know Muhammad Awama's tahqiq, and he has answered the points. There are many other answers, response, uh, uh, res uh, responses from the ulama of Ahl sunnati wal Jama'ah who answer these points. Uh, which people present. You also know regarding the hadith in the Musnad of Imam al-Bazzar. You know this hadith regarding the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa from Sayyiduna Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu an who states that inna lillahi malaika sayyahina yuballighunani an ummati as-salam. There are angels that present the salam from my nation. Qala wa qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said Hayati khayrul lakum. My life is a great good for you. Tuhdithuna wa tuhdathu lakum. And tuhdithuna wa tuhdathu lakum. With shadda and without. Lakum. That you relate to me and I relate. Wa nuhadithu lakum. That we relate to you. Wa wafati khayrul lakum. My passing away is a great good for you. Tu'radu alayya a'malukum. Your actions are presented to me. Tu'radu alayya a'malukum. If you believe angel of death can see all of the humanity's actions, why is it impossible that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala presents the actions of his nation to him in his grave? فَمَا رَأَيْتُ مِنْ خَيْرٍ I do not see any good action. حَمِدْتُ اللَّهَ عَلَيْهِ I praise Allah on it. وَمَا رَأَيْتُ مِنْ شَرٍ I do not see any bad except إِسْتَغْفَرْتُ اللَّهَ لَكُمْ I seek forgiveness for you. I seek forgiveness for you. So the verse, وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذْظَلَمُوا This is tafsir for the ayah from the hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You cannot say Malik al-Dar is majhul based upon what uh, Nasiruddin al-Bani others say is ma'roof in the hadith of the Khazin. And uh, there are so many responses to those hadith. In the same way, in the Sunan of Al-Imam al-Darmi, you know the, the aqeedah of Sayyidatuna Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha 
that when the people when they suffered from drought you asked specifically regarding the drought specifically regarding the drought what did Sayyidatuna Aisha radiallahu anha say when there was a drought the people had a drought Sayyidatuna Aisha radiallahu anha said unzuru qabr nabi look at the grave of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam faj'alu minhu kuwan make a window on the top of the grave ila samai facing the skies hatta la yakuna baynahu wa bayna samai saqafun that there is no roof between the grave and the skies. And what did they do? فَفَعَلُوا They made a window in the, door, in the ceiling of Sayyidatuna Aisha radiallahu anha's house. فَمُطِرْنَا مَطْرًا حَتَّى نَبَتَ الْعَشْبُ That the, so much heavy rain came down that the plantation vegetation started growing. وَسَمِنَتِ الْإِبْلُ And the camels became fat. حَتَّى تَفَتَّقَتْ مِنَ الشَّحْمِ فَسُمِّيَ عَامَ الْفَتْقِ That the animals became fat. That that year was called the year of plenty. This is the aqidah of Sayyidatuna Aisha radiallahu anha. There are so many different narrations like this which are found in the books of the Quran and the Hadith. Uh, if you check the verse, وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ I would say to you that there is ijma' of Ahlul Tafsir. Ijma' a consensus of the people of interpretation of Al-Quran al Karim regarding that uh, they all mention the narrations like Riwayatul Utbi and different types of narrations which mention that Adam, the pe- Adam. Utbi, check it, Utbi, yes, check it now, Tell, uh, they get madad from uh, Jilani, so look, so Al-Utbi, Jili, so look, so Al-Utbi, uh, the narration of Utbi in the Tafsir, وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ We would say this ijma' consensus of Ahlu Tafsir. I'm being very careful in my wording. Ahlu Tafsir. Now going back, I'll remind you again of what I said. Al-Imam Al-Tabarani's quote regarding هذا حديث صحيح Also regarding the shart of Hay Hadir and Qadir Ali from its original source. Also why doesn't it apply in the hadith of Sayyidina Uthman bin Hunayf? Do not forget these points. People have short attention spans. Brothers, I'm not going to specify any names or any sides, but there's been a message or two posted on social media saying that today it's it's outright slanderous and the debate has been uh, shortened because one of the debaters are tired. Wallahi, as Allah is my witness, that both debaters wanted this to carry on. It was me who reigned in and shortened it by two hours because they have the venue till 12. They've got this many books to get out. Yeah? So anyone who says that this debate was shortened because one of the debaters was tired, Wallahi, they are lying. You've got this on camera. I reigned in my powers as chairman to shorten this. Make sure. So whoever's posted this from whichever side, take this down. Jazakumullah khair. Whoever posted whichever from whatever side is lying. From whichever side. None of the, none, none of the debaters are tired. Yeah? And even if they are, they are both willingly wanted to carry on. Okay, okay, let's leave it. Khalas, done. It's been clarified. Yeah? The haq has its, the haq has its lord. Allah is going to defend it. The haq has what Allah that's going to defend it. It doesn't. We're just doing a little job. Allah is going to defend the religion. So, so social media is not a problem. Don't worry. Leave it as it is, inshallah. Inna lil haqi nura. The haq has a light. The people realize what's haq and what's batil. Asrar, one thing I give to you, like this time you came, you brought good evidences, shubuhat, you threw at the people. This is what I was waiting for from the get go. This is what I was thinking you're going to bring. Because I'm just going to show everybody here. All of these are the shubuhat I wrote. Hadith of Uthman ibn Hunayf was something I was already aware of. And 
the hadith in al amwati I have more than 50 shubuhat that you were going to bring. The hadith of Uthman ibn Hunayf, al darir Now, the hadith of Malik al dar all of those, they're not new. They're in the books. Wallahi, they're there. I'm going to go through them one after the other. It reminds me of the statement of Abdullah ibn Mubarak when the leader wanted to kill Abdul Karim ibn al-Khawjan, who was a man who played with the narrations and he made fabricated narrations. And so when he was dying, he said, when he was dying, he said, you can kill me if you want, but I've played with your religion. And they said, don't worry. Abdullah ibn Mubarak is alive. Abu Nu'aym Fadl al-Dukayn. Bukhari and scholars, big scholars are alive. And they will take it at one narration after the other. So now I'm going to help you, inshallah, help me with how to weaken these narrations. We're going to do it together, inshallah. The first way we're going to do it together, inshallah, is the narration of Malik al-Dar. I'll start with that one because it's quicker. So we're going to start with the narration of what? So we're going to start with the narration of what? The narration of Malik al-Dar. Okay? The narration of what? Malik al-Dar. The narration of Malik al-Dar is narrated by an imam called Sulaiman ibn Mehran al-A'mash. A'mash is a mudallis and he narrated the hadith with An'ana. A'mash narrated, bring the Senate, read the chain on us, and then I'll show you how An'ana, he narrated it with An. And Asrar, you're aware of this before because it was brought to your attention before. That's not only one reason why I'm weakened, or oh, that narration is being weakened. I didn't weaken it. The second, the second reason, inshallah, the second reason why that narrate, or the second way, brothers, my time is going to go like that, wallahi. The second reason why that narration is weakened is, do you guys even know the Arabi who brought the story? Do you guys even know the Bedouin who's mentioned the story? Because the story is a dream by a Bedouin man. Who is that Bedouin man, by the way? Are you going to bring hukum shar'i from manamat, dreams? I've, I, I'm not even reading from a paper. I memorized this. I'm telling you the Senate. I'm not going to have to look at papers now, inshallah. Sulaiman ibn Mahran narrated with An'ana. Here's the Senate. If, you, if I'm lying, you can say to the people he's lying. You've got the chance. Scream, I promise you. It is with An'ana to Sulaiman ibn Mehran. Sulaiman ibn Mehran is tabaqat al-thaniya in ilm al-hadith. He's the second level and he's a mudallis. And if he doesn't narrate with haddathana or akbarana or anba'ana, his narration is rejected. And this is bittifaq al-muhaddithin. Unanimously they agree upon this. So take that in your pocket and inshallah benefit from it. Okay? The second reason is that the, the one who came with the dream. Fadl, is there anything wrong? No, 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 I just copied the book. Fadl, we have the book. There's no need to give us the book. <laughs> The other point that we need to realize, that's hadith is da'if, so we don't need to go into tafasil pertaining to that. The hadith la yasih. And then anything that's weak, then what's taken out of it is weak as well. إِذَا لَمْ يَسْتَقِيمُ الْفَرَعُ فَلَا يَسْتَقِيمُ الْعُودِ إِذَا لَمْ يَسْتَقِيمُ الْعُودِ فَلَا يَسْتَقِيمُ الْفَرَعُ If the asal is not in place, then the fara, the istimbat, and bringing the ruling out of it, is wahi. It's wahi, we don't accept that. Uthman ibn Hunayf's hadith. Uthman ibn Hunayf's hadith. How you bring it, Fadl? Just quickly, these are little rasail. They've compiled it. What's the senate for it? The senate that you, you narrated it with. Uthman ibn what? Uthman ibn Hunayf is hadith. The, the first one is na'am, hadith. He's trying to use hadith Uthman ibn Hunayf from the angle of there's a part which is marfu and there's a part which is mawquf. A part which is attributed to the Prophet and a part which is attributed to Uthman ibn Hunayf. Sallallahu alayhi wa The part that's attributed to the Prophet is sahih. Because the muhaddithin all agree upon that. They all narrated it together. As for the part which is what? The part which is mawquf, stopped at the part of uh, Uthman ibn Hunayf, that part is weak, it's munkara. Because of what? Shabib ibn Sa'id al-Habati. Shabib ibn Sa'id al-Habati. That's how you say it. Let, let me finish. I'm, I'm just, I'll, I'll, you read the Senate for me and I'll show you here his weakness. Just bring the Senate for us. Because you didn't show me the Senate. Walahu munkarat. And I don't, the time is very short and he threw all of this at me at this time. Can you open it? Open the shed. Yeah. You haven't got the original. I have the original. Here it is. Show me to me. I have the original. Hold on, my original is here. Open it from the original. But I don't have time. I've got 15 minutes. I'll give you the book, yeah. Here. Okay, read the salad. Where's the salad? The salad's at the top. You read it. Do not. Jameel, we have in the hadith what? It is Shabib ibn Sa'id al makiyu al Habati. He's a munkar. Munkar al hadith. His narrations are not taken. His narrations are not taken. And the strongest narration of his is that which is narrated from Yunus and Anu Zuhri. This narration, if you look at it, that's the weakness. Rawh ibn al Qasim is weak. Not only that, Tahir ibn Qaisa ibn Qaisar al Mukri al Misri. He's the teacher of Tabarani. Is this Mu'jama Tabarani? Allahu Akbar. He's the only person who's ever narrated from him is Tabarani. The only person. is weak. He asked me, Where did you get this issue from? Hadith al Sahih. Have you not read Muqaddimah Sahih Muslim? 
This guy, he said to me, when did Muslim come after Tabarani? You know the science was before both of them. Of course he did, and we know that. Well, I'm asking you is that, you, what's that got to do with the science being in place? Imam Muslim knew the science before Tabarani came. Science, the science is before both of them. And not to mention, why do I need to know how many places he mentions hadith on sahih? And this is haida diverting from the issue of discussion. Imam Tabarani is strengthening or weakening it. Even his statement is not a hujjah. And I told him that in the panel of discussion. I said that to him. I already was ready for this. I said it to him. We're not going to take that unless we apply on the science. And he agreed to that. And it's ajib that now he's trying to cry over the issue of Al-Imam Al-Tabarani. Let me, let, me issue, let me mention another issue that I'm going to go over. He said, Qiyasu Nabi bil haywan. That I, and I gave analogy to the Prophet with a corp. La wallahi, I never will do that. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We spend our life and our life and our life defending his sunnah. That's what brought me here today. And made me leave his, my house. But what we're comparing is a naf'un bin naf'. Where we are comparing a benefit with another benefit. The way that the court benefits, I'm comparing the benefit and the fact that the Prophet benefits the benefit, not the individuals. I'm comparing that and naf and naf is here. Like Rasulullah with the corpse, inna lillahi wa inna ila raj'un. I won't even compare him to the other prophets. You're talking about comparing him to what? Corpse, inna lillahi wa inna ila raj'un. But because the time is about to finish, it's like low blows everything. Juhud, he said, Fir'aun said, Ana rabbukum al-a'la. Fir'aun did say that. But did he believe that? We, eat, we have to do takthib of Nabiullah Musa. When Fir'aun said that, he didn't believe that. How do we know he didn't believe that? Musa said he don't believe it. Nabiullah Musa is saying it. لَقَدْ عَلِمْتَ You know. مَا أَنزَلْ هَاُلَا إِلَىٰ رَبُّ السَّمَوَاتِ Fir'aun, you're just saying, Ana rabbukum al-a'la. And to show that Fir'aun believed what he was saying wasn't true. He said, يَا هَمَانُ بْنُ لِي صَرْحَا هَمَان Bring me... Creating for me a ladder so I can go to Nabiullah Musa's ilah. He knows that this statement of his is batil. He's just saying it. And Allah is saying, وَجَحَدُوا بِهَا Juhud means uh, you know it, but you don't want to say it. But if I ask Asra Rashid what juhud is, he may not know what the meaning is. Um, now I want to ask, brothers, the issue of the Prophet, he brought this point of Sha'ar al-Nabi, the Prophet's hair, that he gave Khalid ibn Walid naf'ah. In the narration, it does not mention that Khalid said, I found victory through the hair. Wallah, he's not in the narration. Where did you bring the Hadam and He added it to the narration. Khalid said, I took the Prophet's hair, I used it, and I found victory. He did not say the Prophet's hair gave me victory. This is a mahalu niqash. And this, Wallah, is not permissible. Because the Prophet is that Sahabas are noble to us, and we can't add what we want into the narration. We're not allowed to lie. وَإِنَّ الْكَذِبَ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْفُجُورِ Lying leads to transgression. Is this how low we're going to go? And the hadith is uh, of, I, I responded to that. I'm, I'm going to, hadith Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, in which he said that the people shakaw ila Aisha. The hadith is da'if for two reasons. Sa'id ibn Zayd is in it, he's da'if. And Imam al-Nasai said, laysa biqawi. Yahya ibn Sa'id al-Qattani said, da'if. All the scholars, Imam ibn Hajar rahimahullah, in his kitab, and Imam al-Zahabi, Mizan al-Utidal, he said it's weak. Wallahi, he won't bring any narration sahih in this issue. Uh, my time is very little, and I have to go over it quickly. I uh, will we'll sit down and we have it, because my time is 15 minutes. You brought this all at the last minute. I promise to give it to you. Let me finish, brothers. Barakallah fiqh. You, okay, uh, brothers, let me finish. Brothers, brothers, mashallah. The ummah are going to watch it, and they're going to see the masadir. Inshallah ta'ala. We can't lie. It's recorded. It's all live. Another thing I wanted to bring is, brothers, the brothers, I'm gonna, I've got it. I'll show it to you, inshallah ta'ala. If you give it from your time, I'll show you, inshallah. Give it to me from your time. Brothers, I want to ask you another issue. This is the last narration and it will close the door on everything. Khalas, intahal amru. I was waiting for this narration alone and I'm closing the door. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Innahu la yustaghathu bi. No one could do istighath on me. This is waquti adabir al-qawmin ladheena zalamu alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. This is the breaking of the backbone. Innahu la yustaghathu bi. No one could do istighath on me. Innama yustaghathu billah. The only person istighatha is done is on the Prophet, on Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. And do you guys know the Arabic language? Innama is min adawati al-hasr. Only Allah. Only Allah. I brought that narration as my last point, inshallah ta'ala. Um, to use that as my proof, inshallah ta'ala. Allahu Akbar. Barakah in this time. Uh, brothers, I want to bring you guys another issue to your minds now. I'm going to give you guys a point to remember and to sleep on. 
Who is the first person who propagated the concept of istighatha? What was the first book written on it? Who pushed that first? Wallahi, it's not Salaf. Wallahi, it's not the Salaf. It's a Rafidiyun Khabith. A filthy Rafidi. And the first book that was written is called Misbahu Zalam. And the man is Muhammad ibn Musa ibn an Nu'man. He was the first person to write it. It's called Misbahu Zalam. I don't know the long, lengthy name of it. He was the first person to ever write it. Alif a kitaban in the istighatha of the dead. This is a belief from the Rafidah. Walidhalika Tehran today is the only capital in the world there's no masjid. All of it is a shrine. It's the only capital. Qubur comes from the Rafid and the Shia. It doesn't come from uh, and Anbiya and the Rusul and the... That's what they fought with when they first came. Allahul musta'anu ala ma tasifun. Allahul musta'anu ala ma tasifun. Brothers, I'm going to remind you one thing. Because the time is fast. إِنَّهُ مَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةِ وَمَأْوَاهُ النَّارِ وَمَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ مِنْ أَنْصَارِ Anyone who associates partners with Allah, hellfire is his abode and he's going to stay there forever. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ أَنْ يُشْرَكَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ Anyone who associates partners with Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forgive him. We need to be scared of this. Allah also says, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَلَمْ يَلْبِسُوا إِيمَانَهُمْ بِظُلْمٍ أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمُ الْأَمْنُ وَهُمْ مُهْتَدُونَ The ones who do not come with ظُلْم in their belief, the ظُلْم here, the Prophet explained it. And the Prophet said to the Sahabas when they asked, he said to them that the oppression that this ayah is referring to is, إِنَّ الشِّرْكَ لَظُلْمٌ عَظِيمٌ Shirk is from the greatest oppression. Do not oppress Allah tabarak wa ta'ala by associating partners with him, brothers. Do not use ahadith which are weak, qisas. Stories that are where here, a hadith which are mawdu' fabricated narrations. To what? To propagate shirkiyat. Last but not least, my brothers and sisters, the people on the right are calling to Allah to be worshipped alone. We are, our argument is, nuwahidullah wahda. We single Allah alone. Ifradullah bil ibadah. We single Allah in worship. And on the left, with all of those books of the aima to sunnah, somehow the propagation and what they're pushing is what? Let's associate partners with Allah by calling onto the dead. The essence of every single person and their fitra will not allow that. Allahumma arina al haqqa haqqan wa rizuqna tiba'a. Wa arina al baatila baatilan wa rizuqna ijtinaba. Allahumma fatira al samawati wal ard. Alim al ghaybi wa shahada. Anta tahkumu bayna ibadika fi ma kanu fihi yakhtalifun. Ihdina lima khtulifa fihi min al haqqi bi idhnik. Inna katadi man tashaw ila sirati mustaqim. Oh Allah, guide us to the straight path. Oh Allah, make Asrar and those who he teaches and his students and his, the, his people, the people of his camp. May Allah guide them to the straight path. And may Allah guide us as well. We want the khair for everybody. We believe coming here today is to help those people who associate partners with Allah. We believe we are more merciful to them than they are to themselves. We don't hate anybody except we want good for them. We believe we're held, holding the people from the leg and they're trying to throw themselves into the fire. And we're saying, don't fall into the fire, don't. Don't throw yourself into the fire. It's your destruction. Follow the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, if we want to go outside the hardship and the troubles that are happening in the world, political problems, suffering personally, our social problems, our marital problems, all of that, the solution is to single Allah in worship subhanahu wa ta'ala, to follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and to understand this religion, how the sahabas understood it. Al khayru kullu tiba'i man salaf. All good is in following the pious predecessors. وَالشَّرُّ And all evil is فِبْتِدَاعِ مَنْ خَلَفْ The innovation that the latecomers come with. Stay away from revolving around these individuals. My brothers and sisters, Asrar has to really understand. He keeps saying, how can something be a shirk and it can also be what? A tawheed at the same time. The jinns, if they help a person, it's shirkun. And if it's tawheed, the scholars are talking about it. How can it then not be a matter which you cannot take on board? Allahumma ghfir lana warhamna. Allahumma ghfir lana warhamna. Allahumma ghfir lana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina. Wa thabbit aqadamana wa nsurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin. Allahumma ghfir lana hazlana wa jiddana wa khata'ana wa amdana wa kullu dhalik indana ya rabbil alameen. Allahumma la taj'al al-dunya akbar hamina. Wa la mablag ilmina. Wa la tusallit alayna bi dhunubina man la yakhafuka fina wa la yirhamuna. Rabbi aati nufusana taqwaaha. Wa zakkiha anta khayru man zakkaaha. أنت وليها ومولاها ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار. I found this debate more like a Friday خطبة I do. I find this is what الحمد لله was a خطبة الجمعة I gave. السرار in the future if you want to tackle these issues come with more points والله أعلم.